Hello, everyone. Um, back again. Just finished the live stream with Jackie. Um, shout out to Jackie, by the way. That was a great live stream. Um, how are you doing, brothers? Um, if you're new to my channel, I am International Passport. Uh, I encourage brothers to get their passports to meet foreign women, invest in stocks, crypto, acquire wealth and riches to live a great life with a foreign woman and a peaceful life. Um, again, shout out to my old subscribers for your support throughout the years. There have been there are people, there's double sound. Okay, um, let's, hold on, brothers. Okay, <clears throat> how's that, brothers? How's my sound? How's my sound, brothers? Hold on, let me try and do something here. Um, give me one second. Uh, how's my sound now, brothers? Okay, hold on. How's that, brothers? Put a one in the chat if my sound is okay. Put a one in the chat if my sound is okay. All right, awesome. Shout out to Joshua Epps, Conrad Grant. So let me carry on now. Um, there's, some, there's been some subscribers who have been from here from the very beginning, and I want to shout them out because they've been through the years where I've been dropping videos regarding Croatia, Australia. So shout out to them. And also shout out to my new subscribers for joining the Passport Movement. You are just as important as my old subscribers. Uh, you want to uh, free yourself, uh, get this get this foreign woman. This is a channel for you. So shout out to those people. And we have a very special guest here today called Theo WAF. Some of you have re are already uh, aware of who. Uh, wealth Engineering, please, no swearing, bro. Please, no swearing. Um, some of you are already aware of who Theo is. Theo is a regular supporter and contributor to this channel and the passport space and he's here again to give us intel regarding singaporean women so without uh, any further ado uh theo do you mind introducing yourself to people who are new to my channel and to this uh uh passport space go on theo hey guys uh, my name is theodore uh waf waf actually stands for web application firewall I'm a specialist in IT cloud security in AWS, which is with Amazon, and in web application security firewall architectures, particularly as um, security as a service. Um, I work with applications on the web. I'm, I create platforms that actually host applications. So like, for example, we're, this is YouTube, it's an application. I work on the underlying infrastructure so that YouTube and other such services can work and function pr correctly. And I focus on the security and the design architecture of them. Um, I've, I originally went to Japan as an adult in 97. I was there from 97 until 2010. I did a year in Russia, a year in France. Um, I've visited over 40 countries in the world. I speak four languages. Um, I'm rather um, uh, successful right now. I, I earn over $50,000 a month. Um, I'm African-American. I live here in Austin right now. I've been in America now 10 years. Um, I'm itching to go back, uh, go, go abroad. I'm just waiting to see the situation with, uh, coronavirus. And then I'm going to be start doing two and three months again outside the country. Uh, normally I would live in another country for an extended period of time for at least one year. Uh, however, now my career is very well set in the United States. So I'm not doing that. Uh, so I'm, I can go for a while abroad. I have to come back, stay, sit be a few months in the United States and then go back abroad. Um, I don't date in the United States. I only date abroad. I refuse to date anyone who would even begin to think that I am less than what, who I am. Um, I have uh, undergrad. My undergrad, I was a triple major, economics, French and Russian, double minor, finance and Japanese. I have two master's degree, one in linguistics, the other in computer science. And I was going to get my master's degree in Russian East European studies, but that didn't work out because I decided to leave grad school and say heck with it. Um, so I have an interesting story. Um, I'm operating very well within the manosphere and I'm helping other brothers to um, get the kind of career that they need so that they can be flexible and travel abroad and live in another country and get married there and actually work there for a while. And then think of a strategy of how to get married and bring her over to your Western country or you stay there. It could be either or. I have a great deal of my friends who are married to non-American women. Um, they don't regret this at all. They're extremely happy. 
they're making children. They don't have a threat to their marriage. Uh, they're, they have beautiful, absolutely beautiful children. They live in Japan, Korea, South, uh, Taiwan, Thailand, Philippines, Russia, Ukraine, and a few in France, which is kind of strange, but they're not married to French women. They're married to other women and they would happen to live in France. So, um, that's who I am. And I'm here to give the load down and help other guys do have this and attain this kind of uh, lifestyle and get this kind of financial security and cash flow so that they can become their best selves and um, marry a quality woman, which is not in their neighborhood. <laughs> oh, that's a great intro, Theo. <laughs> Fantastic. We've got two super chats here. Uh, shout out to Elephant Room 219 for the $5 super chat. He says, hello, Theo. Yes, hello, Theo. Welcome back again for you to drop uh, classics for us, brother. Much appreciated to the time you've taken out, brother. Uh, shout out to Elephant Room for the super chat. Uh, shout out to Thomas Demihin for the one pound seventy nine super chat. He says, "Big up IP and Theo, another classic on the way." Yes, indeed. Big up to you too, uh, Theo. Um, uh, big up to you too, uh, Thomas. Thank you, bro, for the super chat. So let's get straight into it. Um, so Theo, um, can we speak about um, before I even speak about Singaporean women? Can you tell us why you were in Singapore in the first place? Was it for work? Was it for holiday? Give us a, a background for you into the terms as to why you were in Singapore in the first place. So the first the first one was I was an auditor. I was an IT security auditor working for Citibank in Tokyo. And they had a security incident where they needed auditing to go on um, and a, a various um, like cleanup to occur in for data in Singapore and in Hong Kong. So I went there once uh, with my wife and her family and my manager, we went there to Singapore, got some, dealt with some things. And then I went back there the next month, this is in 2004. Um, I went back to, no, 2005. I went back there again, uh, for the same purpose, um, cleaning stuff up for Citibank. And then I was there, okay, my, my, my wife passed away in 2008. So I was there again for business deals in 2009. And that's that's where it went down. That's where the, the dating actually happened in 2009. Okay, thanks for that, Theo. Uh, shout out to Joshua Epps for the $199 super chat. He says, thanks, IP and Theo, for great intel. Thanks to you too, Joshua, for the super chat. It's much appreciated, brother. Um, so yes, Theo, so thank you for that uh, brief intro as to why you were in Singapore. So you know me, I love going straight to the point. Um, <laughs> Do you Singaporean women check for brothers based on what you've seen, uh, feel? Um, a certain segment does. A certain segment is open to it. So there's three main nationalities there. Um, I think there might be a fourth, but th this is what I saw. Um, Malay, Chinese, and Indian. I definitely saw those three. Um, maybe there's a Singaporean native. I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody can, can help me out with that. But I did see melee, uh, without a doubt. Oh, yeah, because I, I was with a melee, and um, the it's like this perfect blend. You have this, you have various religions, you have various languages in the culture, and um, the Indian women weren't necessarily looking, but the melee were, and those those the melee is where I was, like doing my most action with in the beginning. Okay, bro. And I've got a few questions for you there based on what you just said, but I've got a super chat. Um, shout out to Wealth Engineering for the five Canadian dollar super chat. He says, sorry about the IP. I had two browsers open. Didn't want to miss a stream. At Theo, are you married, single, long distance relationship? I think Theo is single at the moment. He's just, he just dates foreign women. <laughs> uh, I'll ask, is there a wife here? Uh, I don't think so. There's no, there's no wife here. Uh, yeah, I, I talk to women online. Uh, so when I do go abroad, I, I usually have someone I can meet with immediately when I land. So I do keep those kind of connections up there. But um, there's no woman in my house. So I mean, my my hands are pretty much clean, right? So I think I'm good. <laughs> uh, thanks for that, Theo. Uh, and thanks for that wealth engineering for the super chat. So Theo, you said so. So you said three main people are there in uh, Singapore, Malay, Indian, and was it Chinese? Chinese, uh, yeah. So, um, and you're saying out of those three, it's the Malay 
that check mm. for brothers the most? What is a melee yeah. uh, person? Um, they're like more of the indigenous. I, I'm sure somebody's gonna be able to correct me at this one. They're more than indigenous. I thought they were more of the um, like Indonesian uh, people who were there. They're, I would say, like they were local, um, whereas the Chinese and the Indian were more of a foreign population. But I, you can you can check me on that because the Chinese have a, a very long history, like at least two hundred years of being in uh, Singapore, if I'm not mistaken. So I always thought of the Malay as being really the the natives or the real people who are make the population. I don't know. I mean, you, uh, you people here might be able to, to correct me and, and, and get that. I'm just I'm just looking at what I saw, what, what I was seeing out there because it was called like, oh yeah, you're Indian, okay, you're Chinese, oh you're Malay. I can tell, I can tell how you're acting. You're acting different. Okay, I got you. Okay, bro. Thanks for that, uh, Theo. Um, a shout out to Michael Conte for the ten dollars super chat. He says, when Theo is on, I stop what I'm, what I'm doing. I take out my pen and paper to take notes. Yes, indeed. Same here, bro. I rewatch my streams all the time with Theo because Theo is a legend in this space. He's much <laughs> respected. So, uh, Theo, um, so you're saying melee check for brothers the most. Uh, mm. Two questions for you now. Do you consider melee women to be the most good-looking women out of all three uh, groups of women that you mentioned? And why do melee women check for brothers the most there? Uh, of everyone what's the factor behind that speak on that i i don't know um i thought that was kind of weird too myself um so the melee that i was with like she was actually i i was doing this um contract negotiation with a company and she was one of the secretaries and she just started talking she gave me a look I, I know that look so i just started talking with her and i said you know i like, I, I had like this superpower back then to really connect to women and get them on a very connect with them on a very like basic and barbaric like emotional level. I could tell what they really wanted, and I just said, "Hey, like I'll take you out," and she's sure. And it, she made it more than uh, apparent that she wanted to go out with me. So I just um, there was a mall nearby. There's there's okay. So in Singapore. Like all over the place, there's some place to eat, like everywhere, and the food is good. It is really tasty. So you just like within five minute walking place, you can find some place that's really great. So we went out and we just you know I bought her dinner and we just sat there talking and you know had a few beers and you know started making out. You know, I, I said yeah, okay, you know I'll, I'll talk with you tomorrow. Um, and she said, fine. So we didn't, I, did, I kept on doing my business um, uh, negotiations while I was there. And the next night, um, I went out with her again. And then she made it very obvious that um, she, you know, she wanted to walk with me to my hotel. And I was like, okay. And that's how um, that happened. <laughs> Shout out to Theo. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Theo's a flipping legend, man. All right, um, shout out to Sean Camp for the $9.99 <laughs> super chat. He says, thank you once again, Theo and IP. I have been to Singapore twice. The, Mal the Malayan and Indonesian women will be checking for brothers hard. Okay, thanks for that, uh, Sean Camp. Um, Theo, speak about Indonesian women. I didn't know, is, 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 is that also true as well, bro? There, yeah, there are definitely Indonesian women there. Um, so I, I, there was always like some sort of immigration thing going on between like if, if, if Indonesians can come over or not. Um, I, I, I I didn't really pay attention to it because, I mean, I'm doing a lot of business. I, I thought it was kind of weird. Um, so I didn't get involved because I'm coming from the Jap Japan side. So I was like, okay, you guys deal with that. I, I really don't care. Um, but there there were Indonesian women there. That's definitely true. They were beautiful. Mm. Um, the, the thing was that after the, the melee... I met, I was in, I, I love Thai food. Like, especially if I'm abroad, I eat Thai food all the time. Like, love it. And so I was in this Thai restaurant and uh, there was this girl who was, you know, she's a waitress, she's from Thailand. And uh, I'm just sitting there talking and she wanted to go to Japan and we're talking about how to go to Japan, things like that. And it was pretty much the same kind of thing. It was, it, it wasn't anything glamorous. I sat there and said, hey, you know, um, 
why don't you go, we go to a cafe later on, you know, after your shift is over. She said, sure. So we did. And then we spent a Saturday together and I talked, took her to a few um, Japanese restaurants and Japanese uh, department stores in um, Singapore. Uh, one was Takashimaya, which I, I love going to. And we just sat there, you know, fun, having fun. And she was like, was pretty much the same thing. She made it apparent. Then she wanted to go back to my hotel room. I was like, okay. And you know, so we went back and yep, she was the next one. So uh, yeah, that's, that's that's where I got, like, I, I think I've talked about Thai women before. Um, that, that Thai girl left a big imprint on me. Mm. Um, uh, Thai women are addictive. Uh, they, are, they are the most addictive in Asia. I would say um, like, it, it's hard to stop with Filipinos. Um, Thai will um, consume your soul. The only problem with them is that there is uh, somewhat of a, a problem with them leaving. And so you have to figure out how to make sure that they don't leave. Um, but in terms of um, connection, like scent, taste, they're like, they're like crack cocaine, man. It's Damn. very hard. It's very hard to resist a Thai woman. Oh, so is yeah. that is that in, is it because they're, they're very feminine? They they have great hygiene. They're womanly. They're playful. Why is why do you say that? Feel in based they're, on your opinion. Also dark. I this the one that I was with was a dark Thai, mm. and she barely like she looked, she looked like she was eighteen or something like that, and she wasn't, but she looked extremely young. She had no cracks. Um, just her scent was amazing. Her hair was beyond comprehension amazing. It was wonderful. Um, feminine, playful, and just wanted a black guy. I, I could tell it was, it was just, she wanted, she found me to be like, kind of like a Tyrone. Like we, we talked about in the Manosphere, Chad Tyrone. I was a successful guy from Japan. He was black and spoke fluent Japanese. It's going to help her. And um, she just wanted to be a part of it. And that's the way that went. That's the way that went down. Uh, they're they're amazing. If you could actually marry a Thai woman, yeah, you're gonna be very you're gonna be very happy. Damn, this is great until so far, Theo. Um, shout out to Conrad Grant for a two dollar super chat. He says, "Big up, uh, big Theo and IP for another classic stream. Thank you, bro, uh, for your super chat, Conrad. Much appreciated, brother." Uh, shout out to Jay Bones for the two dollar super chat. He says, "Theo WAF for president." What's up, Thomas, them, and IP? <laughs> yes, bro, feel for president. Yes, forget Kanye. <laughs> feel for, for president for 2024. All right, um, thanks, Jay Bones. So, yes, um, so carrying on the whole discussion here uh, regarding Singaporean women. So there's, there's, there's three groups here that you may get play with, but you're saying we should rule out Indian and Chinese women completely. No point. Okay. Um, why is um, that, bro? They tend to date only within themselves, and I didn't. The thing that I saw was that I didn't see many non Indians dating Indians and non Chinese dating Chinese. I just want to say, though, I mean, anyone who's been there, I mean, you might say, Yes, I, you went there and you saw that. I'm not arguing with you, I'm saying I didn't see this, but I did see melee dating non melee, and they were more intermingling. Uh, I did see Indonesian dating various i couldn't figure them out exactly but melee i could figure them out maybe i couldn't exactly distinguish the, the difference between melee and, and indonesian but melee tended to be a little lighter than the indonesian and there was a lot of melees i saw them everywhere um so um the melee was like in terms of communication it was it was fun i mean it was it was fun talking with her um i dated her a few times she came over to the hotel a few times it wasn't just one time a um, uh, little emotional, but uh, ultimately it was like she was a little bit more dead in the soul. And I was kind of looking at her like, you know, I was one, one, kind of wondering like what exactly was going on with her. Um, the Thai girl was alive. She was like a nuclear engine. And, uh, and like, let's say this, when I got on the airplane and I left Singapore, I regretted leaving her behind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh man, this is a bad choice. Um, like I should, I should bring her over to Japan right now. Um, but no, that didn't happen. So 
um, again, with two wonderful experiences. Um, I didn't really have to, um, what, this is where I actually was more or less maintaining frame. It wasn't like going to a, a, a like it wasn't like going into a, a club or anything like that. It really was just being personable. This was it was kind of like Prague and Czech, um, but the thing was is that I mean, I, what can I say? I I guess I, I'm a little bit more focused with Asian women, and so I I know how to read them really well, and I know what's going on inside their head, and I'm like, okay. This is what you're really thinking. Let's just execute on you right now. And that's that's pretty much what I did. Fantastic, bro. Um, so, okay. Um, in terms of uh, mainly women, um, would you consider them to be feminine um, based on your experience? And... Mele, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say they're definitely feminine. Um, the one I was with was a little bit more corporate. Maybe that's why her soul was a little bit more dead, uh, but uh, they're they're definitely feminine. Uh, hair is amazing. Again, smile, um, good communicators, uh, educated. This is these are not stupid women. They're very educated. Um, they somewhat know what they want. Uh, the one I was with, I would not say that she was. Neither one of these two women were poor at all. There is no way I would say that. Um, they were both very respectful of me as a person. Um, they looked up to me. They thought I was successful in in everything that I was doing. Um, I remember the melee. She was always talking to me about different dishes and um, different places I can go shopping and recommending different single, uh, different um, souvenirs. She was really fun, to be honest. Uh, she was just a fun chica. Uh, I mean, although in the end, that her just being dead in, in her soul just kind of turned me off. But um, she was actually kind of fun. Uh, good communicator, lots of jokes. Uh, she had been to the UK a few times. Uh, as you know, yeah, I mean, they're a colony, uh, ex-colony of, yeah. of the UK. Um, so it was always thinking about like UK time, how to do communication and services to London. And that was very normal from the Japan side, it was the same thing. So uh, we need, there are you know, English blokes around and so we were talking with them. But I, I mean, I don't know if she was with them or not, um, but she had, let's just say this, she had a different look towards me than she had other guys. Okay. So you're saying she was very educated. So you, you, you're saying like in general, many women are very educated, but still feminine at the same time. So there's yeah, no, yeah. I, I make a lot of money now. I'm more masculine. I'm better than men. They're still feminine, still womanly. Speak on that field. Ex extremely womanly. They're, they, they want a man. They, they definitely want a man. That that's mm. without a doubt. And they want a man in the house. I talked with other Singaporean guys about this and they all had, they were all married and they didn't have any problems with their wives. Uh, the, both the hu my husband and the wife worked and they had kids and it, there was no threat of divorce or anything like that. Um, they were very happy. It was, it was a pretty traditional environment, uh, to be honest with, in, in that kind of uh, sense. Um, no conflict, at all, like feminism is dead. Well, I mean, it might be in some places, but I'd say it's pretty much dead there. Um, you could, I mean, sure, women are working. That's okay. That's one thing. But they're in the labor force. But I would never hear something like, "Um, I, I work. I don't need no man." It's like I work with my man. I want a man. Mm. Um, yeah. Fantastic. This is great. Oh my goodness. Uh, shout out to Wolf Engineering for the two dollars super chat. He says, "Which one was more flexible, tight or melee?" Keep it PG, brothers, but. <laughs> Tie, tie. <laughs> All right, thanks for that. Tie, 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 tie. Not only is more flexible, but um, more per more partici participated more. Uh, it seemed like she enjoyed it more, and more willing to just do it whenever. Damn. I okay. mean, I mean, there was no there was no asking her. It, it's kind of like a buffet. You don't you don't ask if you go to a buffet. It's kinda, that's how she was. Um, <laughs> I mean, really, it was it was pretty good with her. It was it was pretty enjoyable. I was I was enjoying myself. <laughs> All right, thanks for that, Theo. Um, so, uh, Theo, so what are what are the best cities in Singapore for brothers to meet melee women that are checking for brothers? Uh, okay, let's talk about this. So, Singapore, kind of like Hong Kong, is just like one city mm. in, in, in one in one way or another. So you could say, for example. 
what part of the city are they checking for brothers? And I would okay. say every, I would say everywhere. Um, I, I didn't really have a problem with this. So I was in the north of Singapore. I was on, definitely on the coast. Um, it's you can you don't need to drive in Singapore. You can take a taxi everywhere. The taxis are so cheap. I don't even know why you would even think about anything else. You can go from one side of Singapore to the other within 45 minutes. Um, there's a lot of really great zoos, like like parks, zoos, things like that. There's a like I would always walk with one of them all, along the shore. Um, I'm probably trying to remember where I was out. So I had to go look this up. So Mandarin Oriental Singapore, I was there. Um, there's this place called Ruffles Avenue. I, I've been there many times. Uh, shopping on there, buying stuff, drinking outside. It was never really an issue. Um, what they do say, like the, the common point of like, don't, don't um, litter, don't spit. That's honestly true. That place is totally clean. And do not make anything dirty outside. They will come for you. Okay. Like, so yeah, if, if, if you, like if you're if you have some food or something like you, like say you, like say you have a piece of paper, um, on, in Singapore, and it, it drops out of your hand. I mean, it's okay if you go chase it down. They understand. Okay, you you take a responsibility. You're chasing it down. But if you just throw it out and you don't do anything, and somebody sees you, oh yeah, that's the end of you. So they're gonna come after you over that one. Um, so don't do that. Um, you need to be on somewhat best behavior, but in, uh, outside of that, they're really friendly people. Um, it's a nice place. Uh, taxation there is a little whack, and that was something that I was uh, I was thinking about moving there at one point, and um, it's really hard to make over a hundred thousand dollars a year there because once you do, they start super taxing you to death. That must be a tax policy from the UK. Because it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you make over $100,000. Oh, we're going to tax your debt. It, oh, sorry, I'm not going to swear. That's right. So uh, they're going to start taxing and taxing. It's really a, a, a problem. Um, so a lot of the people there I knew, like, like almost all the housing is some sort of government, like, owned or subsidy. There's not... Not people really don't have their own homes. They're living in apartments. And it's kind of like they're bigger. I, I always viewed it as being like like one really big college town in a way, except that the, you don't have dorms. You would have just really big apartments. And, and like, you know how the university owns the dorms? It's the kind of same way in Singapore. Like the government owns that kind of like infrastructure. It wasn't for everyone, but I would say about 80% of the country was like that. Um, so... If you do move there, you're going to move into an area that you, it's kind of like government subsidized in terms of housing, uh, but you can get a job there easily. And um, you can definitely get to sixty or $70,000 easily. It's just going above that. That's where you start having problems. Okay. Thanks for that, Theo. Uh, shout out to Jay Bones for the $2 super chat. He says, my time at British always, the Thai girls are best. <laughs> hey, thanks for that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Jay Bones. So, yeah, uh, next question for you, Theo, is um, so you're saying anywhere in Singapore is good for brothers to meet melee women that are checking for brothers. Um, yeah. So two questions for you now, Theo. First question is, would you say 80% of melee women are checking for brothers or is it 50-50? That's the first question. Mm. Second question for you is, so, yeah, anywhere in Singapore is good for brothers, but are there, are there places specifically that, that you would recommend brothers to go to, give names, give spots that, you know, you would do well as a brother? So two questions, bro. Um, I mean, I had people eyeing me all over the place there. Mm. Uh, so and I don't think I'm anything special, to be honest. I, I was trying, I knew you could ask that question. Um, if you're, down like along there's a lot of hotels along the coast of oh, the coast is everywhere but um there's like a downtown area where they have really big malls and you go through there people are going to be checking for you if you're on the trains they're going to be checking for you mm. um and i would just say like there's like strip malls out there 
And if you just go into, like, you just go through the strip malls and you just start talking with people, so I can talk to the natives, you can run some very serious um, uh, pickup game. Like, it's not hard to do at all. Uh, you can go to a club. I'm, that's not a hard thing to do as well. Um, I'm trying to think. So, um, there it is. So, River Valley, Newton, that area. This is where Takashimaya is. And they have a single pour of uh, botanic gardens. Anywhere this from, like, between the Singapore Botanic Gardens to Fort Canning Park. There's, it's actually, there's a lot of shopping centers and there's a lot of, like, foreigners together. It's a very international area. Well, actually, it's all international, but this is particularly international. Um, you got a lot of melee through there who are definitely checking for a guy who, who can, you know, be their husband. And they're, they're kind of eyeing you in those places. So I always, um, I, I, I was just very successful there. I remember also City Square Mall. Yep, that was, I remember being there and just talking to women and giggling all the time. Like, it was, it was fun. Yeah, it's, it's easy to run game with them. I mean, it was just, it was simple. Uh, United Square Shopping Mall, uh-huh, I remember that area. Um, Peck Kill Market and Food Center. Okay, that food center is really international. Watch it, look at this at Google right now. It's really international area, and there was a lot of uh, carts, like open-air um, sellers at the time. And I would just go through there and, like, look for women who were bored, like, selling food. And I would just, like, kind of make little stupid little jokes with them. Like, you know, like, is this something unique to Singapore? Can I bring this home to America or to Japan? Um, will I go to jail if I buy this? Something ridiculous. I just make these <laughs> jokes just to crack, make them laugh, right? And then they just start giggling and they, they let me talk with them and, yeah, it was. You get to see how they act. It's it's really fun. Um, yeah, they, they, there was never like they really didn't resist pickup game there. Um, but I already had two girls, so I, I didn't have to really keep on going. <laughs> I think two was I think two was enough. Um, <laughs> of anything else? Uh, Marina East. I'm looking at this right now. That's a really big like golfing area. I remember golfing with my friends there. Um, Marina Square, and then Ruffles Boulevard. I just talked about Ruffles Boulevard. There's a lot of cool stuff in Ruffles Boulevard. And um, there's a, like, there's, yeah, the promenade, there's hotels there. There's places you can go out. Um, you can run street game very successfully in these areas. It's, Sorry, I'm having trouble it's, here. Uh, it's really easy to do. You really just need to be uh, competent. And, you know, a little charming giggle. And yeah, you don't have to lead with your money. Uh, you don't have to flash your money. Don't wear Jordans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. and just, just be down to earth. But it's really hot there. I want to say that it's hot, so you're gonna be sweating. Wear, wear something that's kind of open. Um, you know, Gap. Something like I know Gap is closing. Uh, something a little fashionable, like a good, a good um. What is it? Ah, uh, what is um, a good polo shirt, but that that breathes. Not 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 constricting. You got need to breathe. Um, wear that and just have a nice pair of shoes, and smile, and you can get a lot of women talking to you just with that. Fantastic intel, Theo. Um, shout out to uh, Kini O for the five dollar super chat. He says, "Am I allowed to be skinny? Must I have large muscles?" Speak on that, Theo. Not, I mean, I don't have that big of muscles. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, you can, you don't have to, they don't really care about that. Um, I'm six feet tall, 183 centimeters. Um, I guess that was a factor for me to get women there, but you could be like five, seven, like say 170 centimeters. You could be 165 centimeters, which is five, five. And as long as you're running your game well, there's a lot of short girls there. I mean, there's there's girls who are hundred under like 159 centimeters, or like they're about five two. There's zillions of them there. <laughs> uh, so, like the the Thai woman that I was with was about five two. The melee was about five six. 
Um, but yeah, the, the tie was the freaky one. So what can I say? (laughs) 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 What can I say? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm looking at comment. You don't need to leave with your wallet there. I, again, you don't need to be rich. Nobody, it's almost like the entire place is middle class or they're like, there's a lot of like upper lower class to lower upper class there. And you don't have to be like flashy with your money. I would never do that in, in Singapore. Um, you just need to be down to earth. That's it. I mean, they don't, you're not going to get that far if you're, if you're like, oh yeah, I've got money. They, nah, ain't going to work. If you're, but if you're funny, if you are go to a place and just eat and talk, yeah, you can go far there. Man, it's, it's, that's how it works. That's how it goes down there. Awesome. Thanks for that, Theo. Uh, next question for you, Theo, is, um, is prostitution a problem there in Singapore? Yeah, there are prostitutes. Yeah. And when I was in the taxi, I would have a lot of taxi drivers offer to bring me to prostitutes. Oh, okay. Um, so how do we spot a prostitute? Like with walking down the street, do they wear some, do they wear certain clothes? Do they act a certain way? How do we um, spot them to keep away from them? Um, usually a pimp would introduce you to her. Mm. Yeah. So that the, you didn't really have to talk to the, the prostitute, a, a pimp would come up to you and say, Hey, do you want to, you want to have some fun? How, what about her? What about her? And they're trying to bring you in. The pimps are looking for guys who are, you know, kind of like me, like professional to cut. Um, looks like they have a mission in life. They're trying to get them to go in there like for like, you know, 10, 15 minutes and, you know, get the job done and, and leave. And um, I, there's like certain areas where there's a lot of prostitutes. Um, I just avoided those areas. Um, <laughs> oh my God, the questions they're asking. Um, so I, I would say, um, stay away you don't really need to be with them uh because like dating a melee is so easy there or dating a Thai or dating indonesian that's the kind of the one i kind of regret not dating as indonesian um but i you know i kind of didn't know how to read them so well um but they're the dark the really dark ones and um my God, they were beautiful. Some of those yeah. girls were gorgeous. Mm, they are good yeah. looking. They're really good looking. But I didn't really talk with them. Um, I think that was unfortunate. Yeah, thanks for that, uh, Theo. Uh, next question for you, Theo, is um, is feminism a problem there in Singapore? You said, actually, you said that no, it's, it's there smallly, but in general, it's not as bad as it is in the West and it won't be that way in the near future. No, there's not going to be women twerking there or... <laughs> Yeah, they're not going to be like walking outside with their butt cheeks out or something like that. They're not going to do that. So you have like th- three major religions there. So you've got Hindu, Islam, and Christianity. And just with those three, like there is enough religious like atmosphere there that people are going to dress modestly. Mm. That's just the way it is. Like you're not going to. You, you don't want to dress in a way to take another religion off. Um, and you don't talk badly about other religions. You're pretty cool all the time. Mm. Um, if, if Muslims are doing something, you're like, okay, that's cool. All right. All right. You know, I don't deal with that so much. Well, I didn't deal with that so much in 2009. So I'd just walk away and that's fine. They, they understood it. Um, I, w- I was more talking to like a, a, like a Christian background or a Hindu because I was in IT and most of the uh, Indians with whom I was talking were all Hindus. So I would, I would be in that crowd as well. Um, you know, they were dressing modestly. They, they weren't, no, no twerking, no going out there being thugs. Um, <laughs> everybody had a job, you, you were responsible. It's, it's a pretty cool, like, kind of like 1950s. Um, you know, you, you just didn't insult people. That's for sure. Feminism is, it's a zero. You could actually go there and pick up a pretty good woman there. There's, there's some really high quality women in Singapore. Okay, bro. Um, two questions for you now, Theo. Um, on average, 
do Singaporean women and Malaysian women have low body counts or are they also virgins as well? Because that's what brothers want, virgins or low body counts. Second question for you, Theo, is um, on the topic of religion, uh, do, are most Malay women Christian? Because obviously we can rule out Islam women because we know the religion there. But no one's, no one's going to convert to no religion. They're not going to you know, do what we want to do. So Islam, Hindu as well. If Indian women are not checking for us, there's no point going for Indian women. Mm. So are Malay women mostly Christian? And second question was, um, what was it again? Low body counts and virgins amongst Malay women. Speak on that field. Um, there weren't, I would say normally that there was low body counts. You didn't, there was no impression that, you know, that the women were smashing random guys. It wasn't like a hiccup culture at all. Um, it wasn't like the States where you're like, wow, have you been with every guy in the bar? And that's why you're talking to me because I'm like fresh meat. It wasn't like that at all. Um, it, the women are checking for a high value guy and they'll give it up to a high value guy. That's, but it's normally it take a little more time. I don't know why. I, I, I guess I had really good moves when I was there. That's all I can say. Um, but for the most part, yeah, they're, they're going to be Christian. The melee are going to be on the Christian side, um, and or they're going to be on the atheist or like just agnostic, no religion side. Um, it's going to be easy to integrate them into your environment or to your family environment. And yeah, they they're nice. I mean, they're they're nice. They they they've got good bodies. That's for sure. I mean, they can take it. What about facial wise? Are they good looking facial wise as well? Melee women. Yeah, yeah, they're they're. They, they look pretty good. I'm, I'm just thinking about the Thai girl, right? Like she was, <laughs> she she was the one who was really unforgettable um, when I was there. Um, she had a body that was, I mean, it's just built for. I mean, uh, I, I, it would, it was like a, a male pleasure center. So, <laughs> I mean, honestly, <laughs> oh my goodness, I, yeah, man. <laughs> I, that's all I can describe her. I mean. <laughs> she was i mean it, it was really hard to say goodbye to her i mean that was just hard that's a hard day um I, the melee girl was i mean she was still nice i mean there was nothing wrong with her i mean there's yeah i, I would say the melees in general are, are pretty are pretty good i mean they're good they're good options um there's some really beautiful ones there's, i would say how do i say this kind of like what i said in the japan one um a six or a five in singapore would be like a 10 in the West. Damn. Yeah. And so you could, uh, a general girl there, you could pick her up and if you brought her back to your country, people would be eyeing you, saying like, you got a really good one. Um, but you wouldn't really, in, in her own country, you wouldn't really think of her as being anything special. Um, that, that I would say that would be, because generally speaking, you have a, a lot of feminine fit. They're not fat at all. Feminine women who know how to cook, they know how to be in a family, they're educated and they want a man. That would be a normal, like a normal part of life. Mm. So, yeah. That's Fantastic. Thanks for that, Theo. Uh, brothers, if you have any questions for Theo, send it through in a super chat. Theo, don't ask any questions. Let them send it through a super chat or they have to wait to call in later on to answer, um, to ask Theo questions. So brothers, if you have any questions, super chat it. If not, wait until we open up the phone lines for you to call in to ask for your questions. So the next question for you, Theo, is um, hmm, the languages they speak there in Singapore, is English enough or should we have to learn a different language as well? Speak on that, now, Theo. There's, okay. there's various languages there. Um, English is your, your main language. You do not need to learn um, another language at all. Just speak, everyone speaks English there. Now, you're going to see other languages written. You will see Chinese there. Um, so, it's, you know, I'm fluent in Japanese. I could read the Chinese. Um, but it's not like an impediment. It's something that would just enhance the experience. Um, there's going to be like Hindi script. I think it's Hindi. I think I don't. I forgot the language from India. Um, there, I did see some of that there, but it wasn't anything. It wasn't. I mean, it's just like a, a beautiful hodgepodge of this culture. So it's English. You just need English. Just to speak in English, it's fine. Uh, it's not going to hurt you. Just, yeah. Um, I remember being in the skyscraper area 
um, that's like their business center. And yeah, it was all English there. I mean, yeah, no other languages. Fantastic, brother. Um, again, next question for you, Phil, is um, jealousy against uh, black men. So obviously, if people are seeing that, you know, melee women are checking for brothers or the hair in their circle of friends that they love brothers, mm -hmm. um, is, there any, is there any animosity from other men or even other women against black men in terms of working, in terms of dating in Singapore, Phil? Mm -hmm. I would worry being a brother dating an Indian or Chinese. Okay. Yeah. I I would I would definitely watch my back with that one. Um melee? No. Thai? They don't care. Um I never tried it with Indonesian. I don't know how that would have been. That's kind of unfortunate. Um, but I'm dark enough they might have thought I was part Indonesian anyway. So <laughs> uh, you know, what how do you really play that one? Um yeah. But just don't mess with the Chinese and Indian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks for that intel, uh, Phil. Phil, um, so you would consider a melee woman to be a uh, wifeable type of woman. You mentioned that, which is uh, great. Um, mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. So, okay. That's fantastic. So she would actually perform the housewife role while working and while also being feminine as well, bro. And um, yeah. So you can confirm that, right, Phil? You could do like conjugal smashing with her. I mean, that's that. I mean, she'll like if you're married, she's not going to say no to you. Like that's that was a general vibe I got there. Um, as long as you're paying the bills and you're the man, yeah, she's she's going to respect you as a husband and let you do what you want. Um, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about that at all. I definitely got that feel from the tie as well when I was there. Without a doubt, um, so the, they definitely wanted the the man. They wanted a man to lead her. Um, mm. Very submissive and playful. Uh, that's what that's what I mean. I I never with a woman who it just seemed like she was in heaven. Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, coming from that uh, question, there. Um, you so you're saying as long as you pay the bills. So, but. I know Singapore is a rich country, and I know that women and men both have good jobs. So mm -hmm. if you're if you're if you're earning seventy k a year, and your melee girlfriend is also earning seventy k a year, but she expects you to pay all the bills, what's she bringing to the table apart from you know smashing purposes? What's she what's she using her money for? Because obviously, if you're both earning a lot of money, what is she going to contribute to the household? Feel there's not um, a conflict between the two. So in this case, it's kind of like she understands that you're like, let's just think of like, okay, so she would understand where you're coming from. Like, okay, I, you know how I understand where you're coming from, from being in the UK, that, that your, your salary is limited. Mm -hmm. she, would, she would understand that from the beginning. So they're, let's just say this, they're really not materialistic. They're not thinking like the newest and greatest all the time. I never got that vibe from them. I never got like, like I want a new computer or I knew this. Nobody ever tried to play that game with me. Philippines, yes. Japan, yes. Brazil, Ukraine, yes. Uh, they had that kind of vibe. Czech, no. Uh, Singapore, no. Thailand, no. So um, if, if she were in a relationship with you, she'd be like, if you, you wanted to say, hey, um, you know, I pay for the movie and how about the next date you pay? You could probably get her to pay if you had, if you were in a really strong relationship with her, mm. uh, if you're in a marriage with her, she'd be like, okay, let's combine our salary together and then decide how we're going to spend it together. That's, that's how it would pretty much go down. That was the vibe that I got. Mm, awesome. Thanks. Thanks for that, Theo. Theo, I've got a super chat here from Rolf Engineering, uh, $2. He says, uh, thanks for that, Wealth Engineering. He says, how do I recognize a melee woman walking outside? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm laughing because my first answer is, well, she's not Chinese. So, or Indian. <laughs> uh, or Indian. Because I, I can identify a Chinese woman pretty quickly. Um, I'm like, oh, right there. Uh, she's Chinese. I, I know that one. Um, I would say her hair is longer. Her hips are bigger. Um, 
that's the way I looked at it. Because I usually look at Chinese women as being um, smaller and more emancipated, like less calories being consumed. Um, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong with that. So, I mean, if somebody in the chat has a different opinion, okay. Um, they the, the melees were the ones usually looking at me, giving me a look, more of a smile, more communicative, whereas the, the Chinese women were more distant, uh, colder. So I, I knew that there was no doors open, but for the melee, there was the doors were definitely open. All right, thanks for that, Theo. Another super chat from Ronald Taylor. Thank you, Ronald Taylor. One ninety nine dollars. He says, "IP, may I call in and ask Theo some live questions?" Yes, sure, bro. Half an hour's time, you'll be able to call in once I've finished um, asking Theo my questions, the the real questions that you brothers need. Uh, Theo, next question for you is um, conservatism. I know uh, Singapore is a very religious country, or at least on the surface it is. So I would expect the women there to be conservative and not liberal like the women in the West. Can you confirm that for us, Phil? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're going to be conservative. So if you bring over a Singaporean woman um, over to the West, she's not going to hold herself out. And I know that because I had, I, I, I remember in being university um, I, and in Japan, I knew Singaporean women there, like they were from the office, right? They were never hoeing themselves out. They were always melee. And they they were conservative. They had a, a, an inner beauty, a knowledge of their community, a knowledge of their country, and they weren't going to be hoes. So I would never worry about um, a Singaporean woman uh, doing hypergamy when she gets back to your country. No. Yeah. She's going to be thinking about a clean house, making sure that uh, you have children and that, you know, you're, you're satisfied. You know, she wants a warm bed. You know, so that's, Theo, that's why I was there. Yeah. So um, that's great to hear uh, that they're conservative. Uh, but, you know, you know, with liberal women, you know, it's very easy to smash very quickly within like a week or a couple of days. For conservative women like Mele, would that take like a month or do you have to do more? Do you have to show it that you want to be in a relationship? Cause I'm guessing they're more relationship material instead of like, you know, sleeping around and, and doing casual dating. I'm getting that they're, they're relationship type material woman. They want a relationship first. Can you confirm that? Two questions, bro. Can you confirm that they mostly value relationships over casual dating? Second question is if you compare a liberal woman to a conservative woman, you're more likely to sleep with a liberal woman very quickly than a conservative woman. But how long should you wait to do it with a conservative woman? Brothers need that intel, mm. bro. Um, boy, that's a good question. Um, so neither of the two women that I was with, I was smashed on the first night. Um, it was the second one. Um, so they they don't make sure they don't do like they don't want to be a pump and dump. They definitely wanted to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Um. But because they saw that I had value, which I can kind of tell, like I was definitely showing that I was successful. Uh, I knew how to talk back then. I was just a good talker. Um, so I showed that I was successful and that I was, I had my own company, which is true. I had my own company at the time in, in Japan and that I could hire people, which is definitely true. I had, I had employees back then. Um, and then I was doing millions of dollars worth of contracts. So I had that persona of, like high value, you could say. And I didn't flaunt it, but I was strong. And so the girls saw that and they were willing, like I, I would say I was, I was able to get to, to get a home run or in, in football, I got the goal a lot quicker than other men would. Um, normally I would say it would take a week to a month to actually start smashing a girl. Um, but I, I got there a lot quicker at that time. So you smashed both the Thai and the melee woman on the first night? Second night. Second night, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, did you get a feeling from both of them that they, had, they, had, they both had high body counts? Did you ask them directly or did you actually feel like they must, they must have had high body counts? The melee, um, I don't know she had a high body count. I, I, if she did, there was it was all like office guys. Um, I didn't really have a feeling that she did. Maybe she did. It was hard to tell. 
Um, the Thai girl, I doubt it. Uh, she said, well, she said different stuff. You know, you don't listen to what they say. Yeah. Um, I, I would say, I mean, you could find girls with really low body counts there. Um, you can go into the churches uh, or go in, like, go into the schools um, if you're an English teacher there or it's like, so you're teaching. Well, you don't have, you don't have to be an English teacher in there. They could just do like like IT jobs in in Singapore and get a decent like going to going to restaurants, going to cafes. That's like malls areas. Um, you could meet these women who are going to be more or less interested in talking to you. They're they're rather open, I, but they're not. They don't have high body counts. I think I I was just really successful there. I was I doubt. I, I was probably within the first five guys with the, with both of those women, something okay. like that. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks for that, Phil. Um, shout out to Russian spy Sleazeball for the five dollar super chat. He says conservatism is likely why brothers don't visit these Asian countries often. Mm, no. Half and half. Okay. Go no, on, no. I I wouldn't say that. The, the distance is why you don't you don't go there. Mm. Um, it's very far away. I mean, I thought Japan was far. Um, Singapore seven hours from Japan. I mean, I mean to put it in perspective, the UK is sixteen hours from Japan. So, <laughs> I mean, you have to go really far south to get to Singapore. It's hard to fly there. You can't just walk there. You have to fly there. I mean, really, this is it's not like so. Let's say you go to Singapore. What are you gonna do? Um, like, how are you gonna get money? That's the real question. This is why guys aren't there. Um, people really don't have a way of accessing it. But I was there because I was there on business, so I had my own money, right? So, but I wasn't generating money from there. It's not like Japan where, like, if you're gonna date in Japan, you need to think about a way of generating money inside of Japan and staying there. You don't wanna have Western money. You wanna have Western skills and then get money in Japan to sustain yourself. In Singapore, no, you want Western skills and cash flow in order to sustain yourself in Singapore. Just the way it is. I would, personally speaking, I mean, again, respect to the UK, I would say the same thing for the UK. You don't want to have a salary in the UK because the tax structure is so dangerously prohibitive. It's just destructive. So you want to have cash flow from your own country while you're in the UK. Might You work there for a while and then leave. That's the way I would do it there. Thanks, thanks for that, Theo. Um, uh, also, thanks for confirming that, you know, mainly women are looking for relationships more than casual dating. Yeah. That's what brothers want to hear because we're tired of women telling us, uh, I just want to, you know, have a great time, seep around. Uh, no, you get smashed once, keep away from me after that. You know, it is too much now in the West. Uh, these women out here in the West are just living dangerous lives, want to smash for a lot of guys. I'm sick of it. Uh, so um, brothers here want relationships. On, bro. They're a bunch of three. They're a bunch of three or fours. I'm done with. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's just not going to happen. Then, you know, if, if you want to, if you want one, you're like, hey, um, I don't want a garden tool. Sorry, don't need you. Um, <laughs> but in, in melee, like I would say in Singapore, I mean, if if I had been a little more stable, and if I had, if I weren't dating someone from the Philippines, such I was at the time, um, I probably would have seriously taken one of those girls back to Japan with me. And the one I probably would have tried to go for was a Thai girl. Okay. Um, but if I hadn't been with a Thai girl, I, I would have really tried to get that melee girl back to, to Japan with me. Okay. Thanks for that, bro. Um, do they have love hotels there in Singapore? Like in Japan, love, love hotels? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, All you right, can definitely... For... Yeah. Um, Singaporeans need to get things done. They need plates that's as discreet and they know where to go. Yeah. <laughs> right, thanks, Phil. Um, is, is social media um, a problem there in Singapore in terms of it gassing up the women's heads in terms of simps DMing them, following them in the thousands of followers, or is it skewing their minds and all that stuff? Is, would you say it's a, it's, a, it's a problem there, social media? It wasn't when I was there. I mean, I could, I, I really wouldn't see it being a problem there, mm. um, because okay, so let's say that you have a woman like a melee, and 
she just wants to be in like a bikini model. Well, most of the they, people going to see her IG and they're going to be questioning her. Like, why mm. are you doing this? Yeah. Um, so I know the Chinese and Indians wouldn't do it. Um, so the, I doubt the melee would, neither would the Indonesian. Um, I mean, they might have a few things on IG, but not really. It, I really don't see it as being an issue there. Um, in terms of uh, dating apps, this is a place where I would use um, Tinder. Okay. With, without a doubt, I would use dating apps there in order to meet people. Um, I don't. I wouldn't see a problem with that. I wouldn't see it as being a predator uh, situation because it is kind of conservative. So, you know, she's going to be looking at you like she's not going to be looking for smashing on the first date and she's going to be looking to lock you down. So she's just not going to be like desperate, like thirst seeking, like you see with so many Western women. Not going to be like that. Nah. So you could actually use Tinder or another local app that might be like on the train. You might see dating apps. Um, you can actually use those to meet people, but I, I just do cold approach. That's it's really easy to do cold approach there. Okay, thanks, thanks for that, Theo. Um, do you consider uh, melee women to be very submissive? I'm talking really submissive, or is there some sort of fight back? You know, you can't tell me to do everything, or do they listen to you at every word and you know, your, your every command? They listen to you. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, they listen to you. There's never had any resistance. No. Mm. No, I never I never had any resistance there. No, it was they listen it, it's almost like wonderstruck. That's what I would say. Um they would a lot of jokes, a lot of giggling. That's what, it was of both of those women. It was it was really fun there. Um relaxing. I think it just the whole culture is focused on making sure there's no conflict because if, if there's a religious conflict in Singapore, you have at least three groups that are going to fight each other to the death. Mm. Uh, so you don't want conflict and they're not trying to get it. They're just kind of laid back. It's like, Hey, we're all hot. We'll have good food. Let's uh, live in peace, have good jobs. And um, let's, let's live in harmony. That's the way they are. Thanks for that, brother. Uh, shout out to Wealth Air Engineering for the $2 super chat. Brothers, get the super chats up as well and hit the like button, brothers. He says, which one is better, uh, Japanese or Thai? Feel just uh, very briefly, just say which one is better because let's not dwell on that question too long. We've got a lot to go through. Oh, it's hard, isn't it? <laughs> oh, man. Japanese. I, I'm really <laughs> thinking... I really, I'm thinking of Tony. I'm really thinking of Tony work here. Like that's, mm, if you could, if you can get a conservative tie, if you can pull one off and you, you know, there's not a risk, I would go to, I would go with tie by far faster than Japanese. Mm. Um, but the thing is, is that with Japanese, you know what you're getting, you know, the game. It's, it's much easier to understand what you're dealing with, the environment, expectations, and you know the dynamic between the two. So from a practical point of view, Japanese, but if you're just going to talk about nut, Thai. Mm. Okay, thank you for that intel there, Theo. Good question, Ralph Engineering. Thanks for the super chat again, brother. Much appreciated, bro. Uh, next question for you, Theo, is um, hmm, um, clubs and bars. Would you say those are good avenues to meet melee Singaporean women? And if so, do you recommend specific clubs and bars that you went to and you did well there in Singapore? Hotel and the the bars and the hotels. Mm. Yeah, that's that that's where I I can easily meet women. It is simple. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, talking to anyone in the hotel was pretty simple to do. And then I would go to all the other hotels and, and talk with people. Um, the restaurants were an easy place for me to talk, talk with people. Or um, you just buy your food and then sit down and kind of eye a woman. And then, hey, come over, talk with me. 
and I oh, can okay. do that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You, yes. can, you can literally walk into any any hotel in Singapore. Just walk in, go to the bar there, look at any woman that has your interests, call her over, and she'll actually come over. You can like signal to like move your finger, like come over here with your eyes or your finger, and she'll come over. Or, or do you go? Or do you go over to her? You need to know how to read body language. Mm. So if you could read it, if she's giving you the look, go for it. Like that. Um, if she's not, you have to make something happen. I would say like, why? Because there's going to be another melee who's going to give you the look. So just wait. Just wait a little bit for it. Um, like there's so many girls who are like 5'2", five, 5'3". Like if, if you're above five seven, like it, and you're dark, they're gonna they're gonna look at you. Mm. So it's not that hard to do. Um, you know, just make sure you have a nice shirt. You know, nice shoes. It's really not that hard. They're gonna be looking at you different. They they know you're a foreigner. Like there's there is no doubt. They they know who you are. So they could be a little curious. And you could use that curiosity for your own advantage. It's kind of like the Japanese. Um, they're kind of the same way. Um, but it was a little bit easier there. They're, yeah. Yeah. Just Thanks the melee. Up. Just the melee. Um, just the melee. Okay. Yeah. You could, you could probably do that with the Indonesians. I just wasn't, I wasn't really thinking about that at the time. I had Thai. It was good enough. Thanks for that, brother. Um, Russian spy sleazeball, please keep it on the live stream topic. Not about Dolly Parton and that or any awful country music singers. Please keep it on topic, brother. All right, next question for you, Theo, is um, the STD STI rates. Is it very high in Singapore or is it low? It's low. Mm -hmm. I never really heard anything about that there. Same with Japan, very clean. Um, yes. Yeah, it's not. It's not going to be an issue. No, use protection when you're there. Oh yeah. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're not. What can I say? Um, they're they're educated. They 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 know not to have an STD. They know to get checked. They knew they know to use protection. They're they're not like a backward country at all. No, not at all. Awesome. All right. Thanks for that, uh, Theo. Um, so I think you confirmed that um, they're not materialistic, especially melee mm -hmm. women. They got they have their own money. They're not looking to get a Gucci Prada bag like uh, American women in America. Yeah. They just chill. I have this. I'm cool, which is awesome, which is great. So thanks mm -hmm. for that, Theo. Um, next question for you, then. You said the cold approaching is a very good way to meet women, but how is your cold? How do you do your cold approach, um, Theo? Do you go up to them and say, I like what you're wearing? Um, who are you? What do you do? Are you free tomorrow for coffee? How is your uh, cold approach deconstructed for your, if you can do that for us, Phil, that'd be great. I usually just look them right in the eye and then I get a little feel for them. Like I, I start trying to make like deprecating, self-deprecating jokes about like I'm the stupid foreigner. Kind of like what I said with the Prague Czech stream. Mm -hmm. I would say I would try to get them to, to try to educate me. Um, uh, I could do a little bit more in Singapore. I would say like, you know, I don't even like they have this this jerky, like like this beef jerky that's really tasty. It's only in Singapore. It is totally delicious. I could not stop eating this stuff when I was there. And I would make jokes about it. Um, and like, where is it? I need to give it to myself, to my family. I can't stop eating and I'm going to become a pig. Um, and they would just think it's funny, you know, I'm, I'm like this stupid foreigner. And then at that point, I would show them that I'm actually confident and that I'm, I'm not just stupid foreigner, but I'm a little bit more than that. And then they would they would see that I was just trying to break the ice. And then they just start lightening. They become lightened up. They would, it was easy for them to communicate. And that's usually where I would go straight into them. Um, and I would I would try to get them out to a secluded area where I could talk. And I, this, this method works very effectively. And then once I can get them to an area where they can talk, I sit there and just talk about who they are, their family members, 
you know, they, they, most of the time they just want someone to listen to them, sit there and listen to them. And I start talking about how um, I believe in them and um, how I think their dreams are possible and that their dreams are real. Mm. And uh, usually at that point, you know, she starts lightening up, giggling, starts thinking that there's hope and there's possibility in life and boom, kiss, hips, that's where I go. Yes. All right. Thanks for that, yeah. Theo. Yeah. Um, the spine okay. particularly, for, I don't know with Asian girls, maybe just something with Asian girls, but their spines are really, really sensitive. So I would just put my finger up and down their spine just lightly. <laughs> and they would usually start shaking at this. And they they really liked it. You know, they wouldn't stop kissing me. Yeah, it was easy. Yes, brother. All right, um, Theo, um, that's fantastic. Um, so uh, you mentioned briefly on how men should dress polo shirt, trousers, no Jordans, shoes, just dress casual wear. So brothers who missed that, that's what Theo said you should dress like. So next question for you, Theo. And Theo, should you also wear a suit or is that too much? Because I know it's hot there. Is that going too excessive? I see. I had to wear suits most of the time because I was, you know, business. And the problem with a suit is that you start sweating, you start stinking. Mm. So you want to take a jacket off. So you kind of want a, a professional, like you can, depending on your settings, they would usually allow you to wear like a professional but short sleeve shirt. So you have your tie on, right? So then you need a, a shirt that is that breathes and you have these holes in it. Um, so you can do like, you know, Armani, something like that, that has a breathable shirt. It's usually going to be like 150, 150 quid, something like that to buy that kind of shirt but it breathes and it's going to be a lifesaver in Singapore. So you can wear that kind of shirt or just a polo, but make sure you get a polo that breathes. Can't be a thick polo or you're going to be sweating to death and then you're going to be stinking. And that's not going to be, that's, that's no bueno. It's not going to work. Damn. All right. Thanks for that, Theo. Theo, um, next question for you now is the nightlife in Singapore. Uh, was it great? And is it a good avenue to meet women there? Speak on that if you can, Theo. The nightlife was fun. I mean, um, it's, um, <laughs> so, uh, I was okay. So at night I would be around the hotel. I wouldn't really venture out because again, it is kind of conservative environment. So at, at past 10 o'clock, you don't want to be making much noise. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like Brazil past 10. That's when the party starts. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, also, also Prague, Prague, you could actually go out late at night and start doing something. Um, not here, not here in Singapore. So you could be in the hotel area and still talking with people or like in the mall areas where they have restaurants, where there's activities, but as away from apartments. Yeah, there you could, you could be with somebody later at night. Um, you could be on outdoor, like, like an outdoor restaurant with a, with a bar and, you know, get, get a few candles out there with a woman. Hmm. Yeah, you could do that. Yes, right. Fantastic, bro. Are, are there any uh, specific clubs and bars you recommend for bros to go to that you went to? I would, I would go to a, I would go to a dirty dive. Now, I would What's look that? for someplace that's the most authentic, kind of dirty outside, dusty, someplace that's not showy at all. But mm -hmm. you just have like a melee guy out there with with a with a beer, with selling some beer, some alcohol. And just run of the mill tables, nothing, nothing high level, something really low. Yeah. It's like also okay. the, the, my recommendation for the best food in Japan, you want to go for, you want to go for a dive. You want to go for some place that's under B1 underneath the ground. Not that many places to sit in. It kind of looks dirty and greasy and they'll serve up some of the best food you've ever had. I, I I like the dives. Um, also, again, uh, you guys know me. I've, I've talked about this. the best food I had in Hong Kong was the same thing. You, you're someplace that's not flashy at all, kind of a small area, kind of like a dive. It's just like it looks like a kind of like a dodgy place. Mm. You go you go in there, and it's some of the best food you've ever had in your life. So that's usually my recommendation. You're looking for a small place that doesn't look so particularly good because it's kind of rusty, like a rustic place, go there. Fantastic, Theo. Shout out to Russian Spy Sleazeball for the $2 super chat. 
It says sensitive spines now more bothered. <laughs> He's mentioned female has mentioned that before. I think he mentioned that for the Japan stream as well. So I think that really works. So I'll be trying that with, with a couple Asian chicks in the future. Um, next question for you, Theo, is um, hmm, what's the ratio of men? Oh, sorry, what's the ratio? Of, pause, God no. What's the ratio of women uh, to men in Singapore? Is it more women than men, which should be great for us, or is it more men than women, or 50 50? Um, boy, how did I view it? Um, this is gonna sound bad. The way I, I the way I thought it was how many melee women there were versus mm -hmm. Western men. That's it. Okay. I didn't even recognize melee men at all. So melee women versus Western men. That's all I thought. So the, so that I mean obviously obviously there'll be a lot more melee women than Western men because obviously that's the okay that's good. Fantastic. Yeah, you can you can go in there as a predator almost. I never really considered melee men to be my competitor at all. Oh, why is that? Well, you know, <laughs> I'm black. <laughs> That's just the way it is. I mean, I know I'm black, so like, mm -hmm. yeah, I know what I'm. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm bringing. I never had a problem. I mean, my my skin color is wonderful. Like in these areas, I. I never had to. I never had to worry about it. I had plenty of women eyeing me. It wasn't an issue. Fantastic feel. Um, <laughs> next question for you is, um, um, okay, so you said Singapore is one large city, right? Um, and there's spots there. Can you give us like the top five best spots there to meet women there in in the city of Singapore, like? Uh, mm. While you're doing that, Theo, let me shout a super chat. Oh, Frank Harris. Shout out to Frank Harris for the $10 super chat. Thank you, Frank. That's much appreciated, brother. So, yeah, there must be spots there in Singapore itself where um, top five spots that you can recommend that are fantastic for brothers to go there, meet some nice women, have a great time, and, um, you know, boom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, Marina Square. Ruffles okay. Boulevard. Can you type it in in the live stream chat, brother? Hold on. Let me uh, put this over here. Okay. Uh, come on, come on, man. Don't uh, worry, if you are. I'm here. I'm here for a couple more hours, man. Don't worry, if you are. It's, it's it's Sunday morning there. here, so. Okay, okay, there it is. Um, I got it's. I got my uh, monitors. I got to do this. So, uh, okay, guys, look at this in the screen. Okay, so Marina Square, Marina S Q A R Marina Square, Ruff D L V D, uh, Ruffles Boulevard. So Marina Square and Ruffles Boulevard, that's kind of like the central area. That's really easy to meet them in there. I mean, uh -huh. you can just like boom. It's not hard at all. I don't. I wouldn't even know why you would have a problem with it. Then, um, Ruffles, yeah, that was an easy place. Ruffles Place, that's easy to meet women there. Also, um, oh, where is that? Uh, where was I? Where was, oh, I remember meeting her there. Hold on. Uh, Newton, there it is. Newton. N E W T O N. Newton. So with Newton, that's where the Takashimaya shopping area is. Um, Takashimaya. Uh, that's where the Takashimaya area is. And there's just like that entire area is filled with restaurants and shopping areas where it's just easy just to walk up to someone and start talking. Mm. Um, I I really was successful in those, at those places. Um uh, River Valley was kind of boring. I wouldn't go there. Um, where else? Ah, uh, yeah, go there. Uh, Kampong Glam. I, I'll write this up. Um, Kampong Glam. That area. Uh, yeah, there's a moth. There's a big mosque there. I remember just looking at that right now. Don't hit women around the mosque, please. Uh, <laughs> 
I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, brothers, please. Um, unless you have a a a D wish, please don't do it. Yeah, yeah. Like, please. really, be careful. Like, just let them be. Um, don't don't go around there doing crap because they're gonna look at you in a wrong way, and you do not mm-hmm. want to have that kind of heat. Um, but you can go. T- like, there's always going to be a ho- like an apartment complex with a, a level one restaurant and um, like shopping area, like so clothing and restaurant together, or multiple restaurants and maybe like a Kinko's, like some sort of copy area, and some sort of service, and then clothing. It's going to be there, it's like, like all over the place. Um, that's if you want to start dating, you want to look for some places that you want to go into those areas, like the, the restaurant area. Now, if you see a lot of Indians and Chinese there, you're going to go there for the food, not to hook up with someone or not to meet someone. Mm. Um, but if you if you notice that it's more of a melee area, like there's more melees around, that's where you can start talking with someone. It's hard to see if you see a girl that you like um, in the shopping areas. You can definitely see more melees. Um, yeah, this the millions are everywhere. Just just be careful. Because again, if you see a lot of Indians or Chinese around, or if you see women in burkas, don't don't approach women in burkas. Let them be. Mm. Um, yeah, because you're gonna have you have a problem. Um, don't don't even do like a stupid foreigner joke with a burka. Just okay, you've got a burka. I'm going the other way. Yeah. Um, but there there are plenty of women out there who have like like mini skirts on with heels or like with flat sandals. They're not going to really be showing cleavage. Not really. I mean, they might have like like shoulders or kind of a low top, but I never really saw cleavage. They're not like the Philippines where it's like, oh yeah, it's all hanging out. Um, but they'll show their bodies. You you you, they, you can tell they got a curve. They can, you can tell they got booty if, if a one woman does or not. It, the curve is there, but they're not going to really be like in your face about it. Great intel, Phil. Thanks for that, brother. Uh, shout out to Conrad Grant for the $2 super chat. Thank you again, brother. Much appreciated, bro. He says, IP and Theo, WAF. Thank you for sharing this intel. Thank you for watching, bro. Your support over the last few weeks, bro, has been greatly appreciated. You are a regular supporter, and I appreciate every super chat and like and comment that you give, uh, Conrad Grant. Thank you, brother. Uh, brothers, we have over 90 people watching. Uh, but only 78 likes. Um, I don't know what's going on here, brothers. This this right here is free intel. This intel is something that people pay for because there are courses like this that you, you have to pay for to get it, right? This is free completely on my channel. So, brothers, please support by liking this video. That will be greatly appreciated. If you have not liked this video already, please hit the like button and feel free to support this channel and the movement through super chats okay brothers so next question for you Theo, is um racism uh while you were there and what you saw do black men face uh racism there in singapore and is the n-word used against uh, black men there no no um but make sure you're not acting a fool okay. don't don't do something stupid so how do i say this hmm. You you don't want to be gangster or hood there mm-hmm. at all. You don't want the police to notice you. Um, you don't want any in police involvement. So you want to be middle upper class or lower upper class in appearance. Um, clean cut. Nice shoes, everything polished. Um, and you want to be presentable. As long as you're that way, they will not care. Um, smile, be confident, and show who you are. They, then, they, then they're going to be into you. But you don't want to, um, yeah, you, you don't want to be thuggish. Then you're going to have an issue. They, they're really going to. I would not do that at all. There. Uh, okay. When when you say uh, clean cut, is that so? Do we ask you like a haircut, like a short haircut, no dreads, no afro, or? Ooh, I like, wouldn't. I wouldn't have an afro there. I would have, like, like if you have hmm, no dreads, um, yeah, you want to have a, a, 
you don't want to stand out too much. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 they, they know you're a foreigner, but you kind of want to conform a little bit more. Mm. Um, if you're from like a Caribbean island and you have dreads, they'd be like, ah, oh, okay. And they, we understand you're, you're, you're from the Caribbean. Um, but if you're from like a Western country, I wouldn't have dreads. I wouldn't have long hair. Oh. Um, no. Uh, I, I'd, I'd make sure your hair is very, uh, uh, we're talking like Ibris, Alba, uh, Will Smith kind of cut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not even a little bit more hair, like a normal, like number two, number three, four type hair. It's got to be like that, 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 that level of cut, like Idris Elba and Will yeah. Smith have. Okay. Yeah. Okay, brother. Yeah. I mean, right. if you want to have long hair, do it later. Um, um, but you're going to get, you're going to get a wonderful woman there. Um, it is. Yeah. Go ahead. Continue. I was going to make another comment, but go ahead and keep going. Oh, uh, no. Okay. Made, made a comment, brother. Go on. Um, Okay, so when it comes to um, Islam there, there are kind of like what Tony was talking about with the with Saudi Arabia, but not as extreme. There are Muslims, sure, but there um, not all Muslims really are Muslim. It's kind of like not all Christians really are Christian. So mm-hmm. you, you, you could definitely find a group of Malay, actually a lot of them, who might say they're Muslim, but they're really not. They're just kind of following it around. So the melee that I was with was probably would be a part of that group. Um, she was, I, I never, we never talked about it. Maybe she was in a, in a Muslim background, but she wasn't following it. She was, you know, she was more like the agnostic or Islam is the religion that she doesn't agree with, that she doesn't really participate in, yet she says she's a part of. Um, the Thai woman, she didn't give a damn about religion. So she, it, was, it was all about prosperity today, making it make what, what she can get. Mm. So that's how that went down with those two. Fantastic intel, Theo. Uh, Theo, so should, um, should brothers travel alone there or in a group? You could travel alone. Okay. Yeah, you, I would I, I, actually, Singapore. I'd walk outside at two o'clock, two and three o'clock in the morning and not feel, not have a problem. Don't do that in the Philippines for heaven's sakes. But I, in Singapore, Singapore, Seoul and, um, Singapore, sorry, Singapore, Seoul and Tokyo, Osaka, you can do that at two or two or three o'clock in the morning, walk by yourself. You can walk with alcohol outside that time. And nobody's going to do anything. But in the Philippines, don't do that at all. Because it's dangerous, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's dangerous. You do not want to be outside at two o'clock in the morning. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So, I know briefly what time should brothers get in before? Um, so, is that eleven p.m.? Is that when you stop the party? Twelve a.m. Go back to your place. In it basically in Singapore by ten o'clock, you want to be uh, within a half mile radius of your hotel. Okay. You don't want to be like parting it up someplace. A half mm. mile radius is all you're going to need because if you're bringing somebody back to your hotel, then you're going to be at the bar and the bars are going to be open all night long. So, um, yeah, you can do what you want there. Hey, you know, you'll get her to your room by 11. It's all right. Yeah. But in the Philippines, you should be home around 12 a.m. 12 a. Ma- maximum. And in the Philippines, I would say you want to be in your house by nine thirty. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, you can you can risk it. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm I guessing nightlife is pretty much in, in existent. Then, if you travel to the Philippines, you can forget about the nightlife. You've got to be home by nine thirty. Um, you can do it, but you need to make sure you have protection in the Philippines. Ooh. I mean, you 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 need to really understand the environment because somebody might go after you. Damn. Um, yeah, and particularly in the areas where I was in, I was in rather uh, poor areas. I would be much more worried about being outside later at night. Um, yeah, even throughout the most of the country. I maybe so when we do the stream on that, maybe somebody will disagree with that. Um, but I that's where I would be be worried about somebody using a knife against you. Okay. Um, 
Singapore, no, man, they're not. They're not violent people. They know. Singaporeans know. They use violence. The government's going to come down on them. Mm. So yeah, they don't do that. So, would you, so you would say Singapore is safe for black men to live there, to have a good life there, to date? You have no problems. Uh, just be a respectable person, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, you don't... could. You can live in Singapore, be a black man, marry a Malay, you know, smash your brains out, make two kids, and live <laughs> happily ever after. Yeah. Is it like Japan where you can't fight anyone, even though if someone steps to you, someone wants to harm, you, someone wants to attack you or harm you, you can't defend yourself, like in Japan? Or no, no. Get, somebody's if somebody's trying to attack back. you. If someone's trying to attack you in the, in Singapore, you kick their butts. Okay. Defend yourself and then tell the police what happened to you. Uh, they might have a camera around. They're more likely going to listen to you what happened and then they're going to they're deal with it. Um, if they see that you're a rich foreigner, you're only going to be there for a certain amount of time. They're going to be like, okay, we're going to deal with you. Not like Japan, though. They're gonna, Japanese are going to say like, hey, we know who you are. You're the dangerous one. Then you, you, you have a problem. Um, but not, not Singapore. Yeah, I've always that was, that's what that's always tripped me up about Japan. Like, even if you're being attacked, you can't defend yourself. Like, they're what? not gonna they're not gonna attack you. Okay. Yeah, like people will look at you like, why did you do that? Like, are you stupid? Like, that's that's how it'd be. Like, what? Why did you do? Like, what are you doing? Whereas in Singapore, I mean, you can kind of understand if there is a, a an attack, but it's rare. I mean, they would expect you to defend yourself because they got the English sign on them. They know what's going on. Mm. Um, but they would say, like, why was there an attack? Like they, would, they would question both sides, whereas okay. in Japan, no, no. Um, in the Philippines, you have, you have to be much more worried. You don't want to be an attack. You don't want, to, you don't want that situation. Because mm. if, if there's a medical, if you need medical care, you, you, you're going to be worried about that. You don't want to have medical care in the Philippines. I guess it's expensive, but we'll have that stream soon. But it costs yeah, yeah. less. Okay. All right. Um, shout out to Conrad Grant for the two dollars super chat. IP, you're a legend. Thank you for all that you do. Hey, thanks for the kind words, brother. And also, uh, feels a legend as well, Phil. So I appreciate the time taken out for this stream, Phil. Uh, I think I'm gonna open up the phone lines. Um, let me see if I have any more questions for Phil. Um, yeah, I think it's yeah. I think I've, you've answered my questions, Phil. Uh, brothers. Um, join the facebook group before i open up the phone lines uh you can still join the facebook group uh the facebook group is an amazing group where we help each other out drop intel there's the facebook group brothers mm-hmm. um again um i am on i am also on twitter brothers so follow me on twitter and send me a dm on twitter um twitter is also popping i'll be using that a lot more often so send me a dm on twitter and definitely follow me on twitter and then I have my IG page as well. Um, follow me on IG, send me a DM. I will get back to you. Those avenues you can get uh, through to me. Brothers, in the meantime, get the likes up. If you have enjoyed this live stream so far, please feel free to send more super chats. Your support is greatly needed and appreciated. The Discord server is coming very soon. Hopefully in the next, uh, it's coming very soon. And then the cash app is also coming very soon, brothers. I know brothers have been asking for cash app, PayPal. I'm setting that up. It's coming very soon, brothers. Please give me a little bit more time. Um, Phil, do you want to say something before I open up the phone line? Sounds like sounds like you want to do. Oh no, it, it's it, it, this has been good, pretty good so far. I wanted to answer the questions. Mm-hmm. Um, Singapore is a little trickier um, than other areas, but if you're if you're chill, you can get an amazing woman there. Um, it's you, you just have to know how to play the game right. It's not, yeah, you got to know how to do it. You, you got to know what your objectives are, but it's actually much more down to earth. Fantastic. Thanks for that, um, Theo. Um, okay, so brothers, there's a live stream uh, corner link. Feel free to call in um, if you have any questions for Theo. If you don't want to call in, send your questions through Super Chats and Theo will answer it. So it's super chats or call in if you want Phil to answer any questions you have on uh, Singapore. This has been a great live stream so far. Singapore has always been on my list because it's a rich country. I heard that's conservative. I love conservative women and um, can't wait. Another country on my list. Oh. All of all of the English blokes there, they were all married to Singaporean women. Damn. 
No, no, it's it's a very easy marriage to get to get done. Um, they had various religions. They didn't care. You know, they talked about football, normal stuff. Manchester United. Did, did, did they convert to um the the woman's religion? Did they have to convert? They no, 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 it's not like that at all. That's that's probably one of the reasons why I was more hesitant about Indonesian women because I knew that they were much more practicing of Islam. But the reality was that wasn't actually true back then. That was my perception. Um, but the melee, they were, they were much more of understanding class. So they would, if they can get an English guy, they would go that way. There was no no English blokes were converting. Hmm. How how was the how was the divorce rates like and the, the divorce laws like in Singapore? You, you don't know, get divorced. Um, you, you, there's oh. no divorce. Not really. Okay. No. no. No, it, you're not going to get ruined also. Divorce really doesn't happen there. I mean, it, it, it can, but there's not a problem with it. Not like fear and suffering in the West where the man is like, will I live in a cardboard box afterwards? Are you going to destroy my life? Yeah. Like that, you know, you don't have to worry about that in Singapore, but she's not going to divorce you. If she does, um, could she take half your stuff or no, that's not happening. They, they're very fair in Singapore. She's not yeah. going to take half of your stuff. I, I, I rarely heard about a divorce there. Because the, the thing, the, the women like the guys, and if they're, if they're married to a Westerner, they, I would, uh, maybe you could say that you could, they hit the lottery, but they, they're happy. It's kind of like, I know, like what Tony would say, it's kind of like the countryside in Japan. They're just not going to divorce mm. you. Yes. All right, thanks for that, Theo. Let me bring in uh, Jay Bones. Uh, what's up, Jay Bones? IP, what's going on, big bro? Hey, Jay Bones. What's going on, brother? How you doing? Hey, Theo. How you doing? Yeah, man. Yo, another one. You guys are excellent, man. This is this has been, oh, man. Theo, Theo always brings the heat, bro. Theo always brings the heat, man. Thank you for yeah. joining us again, man. Thank you, Theo. Yeah, no problem. So, ask questions. I'm I'm ready for you. No, 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 no questions. Because uh, um, uh, like like always, you know, it's 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 good to have brothers like you here. Um, I used to work for British Airways, so I've been around the block, been pretty much everywhere, and you know, I usually I usually don't have much questions because I already know what the hell is going on. <laughs> so so it's not. So a, you dated Ty also then, right? Oh yeah, definitely. My freshman year in college, actually, I was working from. Um, I used to. I told. I told uh, IP before. I used to work for British Airways, so we had a lot of dealings with Singaporean women. And you know, trust me, it's. I know. I know. I know. Um, IP loves the Japanese girls, and a lot of the brothers are obsessed with Japanese girls. But I did prefer more Thai girls because they are much more enthusiastic. A lot of them are fun, and you don't really have to second guess if they're checking for brothers or not. They love black men. Like they they're do. overly they Yeah, do. they love black men. They yeah. love black men. Like if you're if you're I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get, I'm gonna tell you a quick story, IP. Um mm -hmm. when I was a freshman, right, I had um what what usually happens like if you you know if you work for British Airways here, they would give us free tickets. And I was actually you, you get to hang out in uh, the first class lounge. So I was sitting in a lounge one time and I kinda know where I am. So what's his name came through? Um at the time you, do you remember the movie Takers with Idris Elba? Yeah. Yeah. After he after he was done filming, he came through JFK Airport, and we were actually in the first class lounge, and the Singapore the Singapore woman were they were just going wild, like they were just going bananas when they saw him. They love Singapore women love black men, like yeah. they're just yeah they're obsessed with black men. Uh, why is that? Saying? Why is that so, J Bones? I've from from what I've from what I've heard, I, I used to date a girl. She was um she was in culinary school up in New York, in upstate New York, and she told me that a lot of them just basically they don't have that masculine feature within their culture. If you look at most Asian men, they're kind of built like kids. No offense, but you know they're they they kind of look like a little bit like toddlers. Most of them are not even reaching over five foot five or five foot six. So it's like they prefer black men because the majority of us. You know, we're not all Michael Jordans, but we are very – the image of masculinity in society, anywhere you go, is black men. It's black not – it's not – yeah, it's not yeah. It's not white men or Asian men. Mm. The most masculine men in society are black men. Like black men. The, 
Yeah, the majority of us look like t- uh, tall, giant uh, Hercules type of gods. Right. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yep. but with them, that's why. That's why I know. I know. I know. Dudes, everybody has their own preference. I know everybody. You know the uh, the majority of the brothers love the whole Japanese thing. But trust me when I tell you, in my experience dating the thigh girls, they and they're very enthusiastic. They're very fun. You know, Japanese women are much more conservative. You know, they're much more kind of reserved a little bit more. But the thigh girls are like, you know, they're they'll talk to you. They're they're really fun. They're like fun to be around, and you don't have second guess if they like black men or not because they love brothers. Like they love, love, love brothers, bro. Yeah. So I'll be comment on that. Like, so you have to kind of. There are some things to worry about with Thai women. Um, you have there 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 are considerations whether or not she'll leave you. Um, but if you have one that's devoted towards you, like she really only wants you. You are in for a ride. Yeah. I mean, th- she's, she's gonna take you. Like you're. That's it. It's gone. I yeah, never. The, I never had yeah. women who are so enthusiastic, and uh-huh. also enjoyed me inside of them as much as I. I. I promise you, the cooking skills is going to go to a different level. Yes. You're gonna be. You're gonna be eating so much. You probably might explode. Damn. The food is yes. good too. Like yes. it is generally really, really good. That's why I say whenever I go abroad, I almost always eat Thai. It's Thai first and Japanese second. And <laughs> and uh, the women, if I could hook up with a Jap with a Thai woman, it's I mean it's game over. I and mean, yeah. I, I just won't stop with her because like they can take it. They they love it. They want it more. And it mm-hmm. seems that they're they're more excited with you and her than. Than you getting her like she thinks she's scoring with you, yeah. and like really, like really, girl, like yeah, yeah, she thinks she's lucky, and that was always my feeling with them. I had a great time with them. They were, oh my yeah, god, they're they're pretty they're pretty dope. And and one yeah. thing one thing one thing that we talked about IP, um, just to add on to it, they are very they're very um aggressive with the idea for competing. They mm. compete for black men. Like they, they will find any avenue to basically make sure that they're number one. Like they will compete. If you if you talk to them about, you know, hey, you know, there's this girl, yeah. No, 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 no. They're going to find a way to remove whatever they need to remove that is going to be competition towards them having you, and they're going to go for you under any circumstance. Yes. Mm. They're very yeah, they're very competitive. Like they're very competitive. Like they love brothers. Like they love blood. <laughs> Trust me, I see. <laughs> like it was, it was different. Like when I was when I was at British Airways, bro, it was like a, it, it was like a. I, I can't even imagine trying to pick out which one was the best. Like yeah, it was so, tough. Well, okay, so this is my this is my thing with the Thai women. So they have this thing about being lighter, right? Yeah. And I don't know if you saw this, but like. They really want to have lighter skin, but the, so the darker skinned ones kind of had a complexion about being so dark. But the darker skinned ones were the ones I wanted to bang the most, mm. and so it was kind of like she felt lucky to get a guy because she because she was darker skinned. But with me, I was like, let's do it again. Like you're good, okay. Let's do another date. Yeah, you're ready. Let's you're ready to go. Let's do it again. I mean, <laughs> it it was really fun, and yeah, she always man. just had this smile on her face. I mean, it was just unbelievable. So, yeah, there. The, the, the other problem is is speaking in Thai, which is more difficult to do, and then you're not really going to be like money in Thailand, so that's a, another issue with them. But in terms, like, if you can lock down a decent Thai woman, you're man. That's gonna be a good experience. Yeah, like, you're I can't, you're, I can't yeah, stop you're smiling sad. about them. My experiences with them were totally erotic and wonderful. Yeah. Ugh. Damn. Uh, hold on, hold on, brothers. Uh, shout out to Mike M for the uh, twenty dollars super chat. Thank you, Mike M. Much appreciated, bro, for the super chat. He says, um, supporting the machine. Loving the knowledge being dropped. Yes, shout out to Theo, WAF, and Jay Bones, the legend, uh, for dropping great intel. Again, thank you, Mike, for that uh, $20 yeah. super chat. Thanks, brother. Mike. It's much appreciated, Mike. Thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah thanks a lot, Mike, bro. Um, yes, uh, this is great intel, brothers. Um, anyone who wants to call in, call in now. If you want to ask Theo mm-hmm. questions, this is a great discussion so far. 
So um, did you did you find while they're calling in J Bones? Did you find like their smiles to be so refreshing? You know, I'm I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something about Theo because between you know we if you live on the East Coast, I live between New York and Jersey all the time. The the thing about it is that one thing I really really liked about them is the level of respect. You know, if you we we just don't have that within our culture. You understand what I'm saying, Theo? We're we're dealing with so much masculinity within our community. So it's like when you meet girls like them, that's why that's why I mean, I, I respect I respect. I respect it, IP. Like I respect you and you know Theo getting the Japanese thing out. But if 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 Theo if if we if we can really get more info by thigh girls, I, I think you should push that more towards the brothers. Because trust me, especially one thing about it too is the color spectrum. Knowing that a lot of them are brown skin and you know they're just beautiful. They're mm. just beautiful. It, it, the whole package is right on point, IP. I promise you, they're beautiful. They smile. They're feminine. They're incredibly feminine, and mm -hmm. it's like they, they'll just go up and beyond above for you. Like Theo, you know, I remember. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Jay Bones. Theo, have no, you go been ahead, to bro. Thailand before? What? Have you been to Thailand before? Yeah, I was. Oh uh, yes, I've, too. I've I've been to Thailand, but most my dating of Thai women were outside of Thailand. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Can we set up a stream of just on, on dating Thai woman? So it won't, it won't have to be about you living in Thai woman, just dating Thai woman. Because if brothers need that, if J Bones is saying that Thai yeah. are good, uh, let me know if you're interested in that for you. And we'll set that up in, in the, in the yeah, future. Yeah, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the logistics. That's the whole problem with it. Yeah. Mm, okay. You could, you could do it. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Thanks for that, Theo. Uh, I've got a uh, Ronald. T Actually, no, J Bones, finish your point there. Sorry, brother. No, no, no. It's all right, IP. I, I was just gonna say that um, Theo is definitely right. I mean, we we can't get it, it can't get any better than this because you know uh, Theo's Theo's the champion and he knows exactly what's going on. Um, it, it's it's a difference between dating thigh girls or dating a different woman in their country and then dating them outside. Because I'll tell you one mm -hmm. thing though, the thigh girls in New York, like they're very they're still really cool. Like even though they live mm -hmm. in an environment where the feminist nonsense and basically the liberal the liberalism is above and beyond they have a lot of family values so they tend not to be penetrated by buffoonery do you understand <laughs> what i'm saying they're not they're not dancing around talking about wop you know they're not dancing around talking about you know n words this and n words that the majority mm -hmm. of them are the majority of them are really and especially the ones also that live in california incredibly feminine incredibly feminine Ooh. Incredibly feminine, yeah. Trust me, bro. Damn, Trust me, bro. Oh, yeah. Ooh. yo, yeah, J Bo, you dropping some mad game there. So you're telling yeah, me they're man. still feminine? They're still feminine in the West. That's what we're San, hearing, brother. San, San, San Diego, San Diego, and I would say definitely Manhattan. You would find mm -hmm. some of the best thigh girls. Some of the best. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Yeah. We got to set up that. We got to set up that. Leo, trust, trust me, because yeah. here's the thing about it. Um, I because. At the end of the day, here's what's going to happen. I know the Japanese thing is, you know, is, is, is what the brothers are really, really going for. But it's like once you get the info about Thigh Girls, trust me, things is going to change. It's going to be a 360. I'm telling you. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. there. You have to go. It's, it's basically how do you ascertain risk? That's the more difficult thing with them. But they they're very like they're addicted. Yeah. They're very hard to get away from. Um, it's only because of technical like logistics that I was away from a tiger. Um, again, I was with a Filipina as well um, at the time, but they're I mean, they're they're full on addictive. It, it's hard to break out with a, with a tiger. She could she's the one who can break your heart. Yeah. Um, but you don't have you don't share you don't have to share that information with her. Like just keep it inside. But she's the one who could do real damage to you. Um, but if you're in an area where there's a lot of tie. And you're black man, good lord! Oh. Yeah. Go See, straight yeah. for him. I, I got uh, Theo. I got. I got. I got. I got. Um. I got a whole thigh community like right next to me. <laughs> so I'm. I'm actually like interacting with them like all the time. Don't so get me. I, don't get going crazy. <laughs> I'll move there. I'll, I'll move there, man. Uh, <laughs> yo, I, I swear every every morning I have a, I have a Thaiese woman. She she basically prepares breakfast for her. like they are just amazing. Oh, uh, IP, shout out to uh, the brother from Harvard. He's actually in here, and I I know he has a lot of information about Singapore too. You might yes. want to get him up here. 
yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we we ain't signing ish. Uh, please call in, brother. We need that intel regarding Singaporean yeah. woman. Please, brother. Definitely. Please, but we need that, I, brother. We need that. <laughs> IP, <laughs> IP. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut because I want the brothers to basically. I I want Theo to give like the best. I I think I think that I think the thigh. Whenever, whenever we're ready for the stream, I think Theo's gonna kill it with the thigh. Cause you, you guys are really obsessed with the, you know, with the Japanese thing. I get it. Everybody has their own preference. I get it, bro. But once you guys get the information about the whole thigh situation, trust me, this thing is gonna be a complete 360. You guys are probably gonna forget about Japanese women. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. I, I just wanted to, uh, I want to say that one point. So, like, I went through my like storage, my my um like online storage that I hadn't used since um 2009 2010 uh, i went through like my backups you know i'm a computer guy right so i was looking at this stuff and i had photos of women of course that i hadn't really accessed for years and of all things all the women were thai Damn. And i was sitting there i was like i was in japan mm -hmm. and i had photos of thai women on my computer and i was yep. dating a filipina what does that mean? Like, actually, my sexual preference was Thai. Exactly. Like, why, why didn't exactly. I execute on that? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Theo. I didn't. I didn't want to get into it because IP keeps everything PG thirteen here. Yeah. But the difference. Let Let's not. Let's not act like it's not. You know, we're all men here. Let's not pretend that Thai girls are not much more fun in bed than Japanese. Thai are definitely much more fun. They're much more fun. They're definitely much more. There is no competition, yeah. Theo. I'm not even going to argue Ooh, with you. All right, about that brothers, way. how about we have this Thai discussion for the Thai stream? I don't want to give it all away <laughs> in the stream. Man. Is it, this, is, this, is, this is exciting me right now, but let's keep it on. I have to cool myself down. I'm having memories. Let's keep on Singaporean woman and then set up that Thai stream. J Bones, you've been involved in that stream as well. We'll get brothers there to speak about Thai women, but Theo, we need that intel on Thai women in the future. But I'll reach, <laughs> I'll reach out to you, Theo, in the future to get that done. Um, let me bring in, bro, thanks for that, J Bones. Thanks for calling in, brother. Uh, put yourself on mute, brother, please. Gotcha. Um, brothers, please get the likes up if you're enjoying the stream. Also subscribe if you're a new viewer to my channel. If you are enjoying this content, if you want to break out the matrix and actually deal with foreign, delicate, beautiful women that will that will respect you as a man, I won't argue with you. Subscribe to this channel. A lot more content coming your way. And of course, feel free to send through super chats if you are enjoying this channel. I want I want to support this channel in its international passport movement. Ronald Taylor, how are you doing, brother? I'm doing great, IP. I'm doing great. I can't complain. How are you? Yes, brother? welcome. I, I am doing very fine, Ronald. I've not seen your uh, your name before. Are you a new viewer to my channel? Actually, IP, I had a phone conversation with you uh, earlier this week. I'm the young brother. Oh, yes, Ronald. Yes, yes, uh, yes, Ronald. Welcome, welcome, Ronald. Thank you for calling in, brother. Um, yes, bro. Um, do you have any questions for uh, Theo, uh, Ronald? Yes, uh, actually, uh, I would like to direct my questions. Uh, I have two to the entire panel okay. because I'm only 18 and all of y'all are so wise. Okay, brother. That's fine, sure. brother. Uh, so I wanted to give you guys a little bit of background about myself before I start. Um, I'm 18 uh -huh. years old. Um, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, I've, I'm a big fan of Theo because I'm really into cybersecurity. Um, mm -hmm. And I was wondering, um, I'm thinking about studying abroad in college and I know Theo studied in uh, France and I was wondering Theo what's your what was your experience in France uh, just studying and with women and, okay um, um, do you recommend sorry, sorry Ronald uh, uh, sorry about for crying in um, you want to keep this thing about Singaporean women I know you're 18 you want to get um, intel regarding um, your career but I told you to join the Facebook group and you can you know speak to Theo about that directly you know, oh, I, yes, I, I yes, get what you're yes. doing. Yeah, yeah. So, Ronald, please do that. Let's keep it about a uh, Singaporean woman. But if you want to speak to Theo about career, in fact, you can just make a post in the Facebook group about career advice. And er anyone here, Thomas, me, Theo, J Bones, will give you advice, brother. But keep it on uh, Singaporean woman, bro. Uh, okay. I, I, P, I P. Yes. 
Yeah, um, give me a second with the kid, man. I I live I used to live down there. Um, uh, uh, Ronald, do you live next to Slough? Uh, no, I live like North County area. I go to, but I go okay. To All right. Well, when when you when you get a chance, because we don't want to break IP's um his stream. When you get yes. a chance, just join the Facebook group. I I I used to live across the street from uh Slough University, and I'm down there in St. Louis, so I can help you out if you want. Fantastic. All right. Great. All right. Thanks for that, Jay great. Bones. Thanks, I Ronald. Thanks, y'all. No, no problem, brother. All right. Take it easy, brother. Okay. All right. See All you, right. Ronald. All right. Thank you. Um, we ain't signing ish. Oh, Tokyo sixty four is in the house. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right, you brothers, join this morning. What up, what brothers? If I, Tokyo. if I get dangerous now. This, oh, goes, this is my hey, scary, scary hours right now, brother. The scary hours. Hey, you got hey. the, the legends here. <laughs> scary hours. Hey, I got to listen to the. I just coming in on the stream. I got to go back and listen to it later on the night. But I tell you what, brother, Singapore is the boom. Ah, Singapore yes. and the Thai girls. I heard y'all talking about the Thais. That was those were my first group of Asians I dated, man, with the Thai women. They love the brothers, man. They love the brothers. I, I can't agree on the 360 with the turnaround with Japanese girls because I still think Japanese girls are the bomb. But you know what? The ties are way up there too, brother. That's like number two on my list. Damn. Yeah. All right. I I'll come to you afterwards, uh, Tony Berry. But let me bring in We Ain't Signing Ish. She's been waiting. How are you doing, brother? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Theo, Jay, to uh, Tokyo 64, IP. Hope you all are doing well this morning or evening, wherever you guys are at in the world. Um, yeah, I, I saw the I got the alert for Singapore and I, I said I definitely have to chime in because uh, Singapore for me is hopefully will be my final uh, destination as far as retirement. Um, mm -hmm. The the city is amazing. I will I would put it against any any city in America. It's better than Hong Kong. Uh, it's yes. right up there with with Tokyo uh, with Tokyo. I've been there several times. Um, the like you know it, they're ethnically Chinese, so when I go there, it, it's like you, it's seamless for me because I speak Mandarin and I've been living over here for 14 years. So whenever I travel back and forth, it's seamless. So and then um, with Singaporean girls, they're a little bit more sophisticated than Chinese girls. Uh, Singaporean yeah. girls are great for dating. Uh, for marriage, I would still say. Uh, the two best Asian women, I would say, in my purview, would be, well, three, would be Japanese, mm -hmm. Northeast Chinese girls, like Dongbei, line, Dongbei uh, girls. Uh, they're the most loyal I've, I've, I've ever seen. They will sit with you in the gutter. You can lose everything. And they'll, they'll, they won't leave you. They'll stick with you. Uh, this is like the Northeast part of China. Japanese girls and Kazakh. Kazakh girls, but Kazakh girls, good Kazakh girls are hard to get. The ones that are mixed with like half Korean, half Russian. I dated one, Ooh. but they're super, they're super religious. Like I was dating, I, I was studying Chinese in uh, Zhongshan University in Guangzhou, and she was living with her cousin, and we dated. And she told her, her cousin told her parents, and her mother and father flew to Guangzhou, gave her a beating. And got her out of school and shipped her back home. They are super hard to date because you have three, two, two types of Kazakh girls, right? Like white Russian looking, Korean looking, and then like the Muslims, which are like half Korean, half Russian type girls. But yeah, there's single, this mixture. You know, that exactly yeah. right. Because I was there and I, I yeah. saw them and I was like, I was mesmerized. They're right. hot. If we're talking Asia, these three girls are who you would marry. Japanese, Dongbei, or Kazakh girls, no matter what happens, they ain't leaving you, no matter what happens, right? Now, Singaporean girls, you know, they're a bit more modern and things like that. I mean, they're like great girlfriends. They're sexy, cute, definitely a place you want to live if, when you retire. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm trying to get, get, my, get my money up now so I can get there. So, like, Singapore is my favorite country in the world, actually, right? And and so, yeah, you, you guys, you definitely want to go to Singapore. Like I was in, um, uh, what is it, Marina Bay Sands there? And then, yeah, you know, it, it has everything, right? It, it just has everything. And you have people from all over the world that stay there as well, Malay people, mm -hmm. Russian women, everything. Like it's, 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 it's New York times 20. But it's not so, so expensive. Yeah. 
that was the thing. It was never yeah. that expensive there. I could easily live there. It wasn't that hard. Um, I didn't care about the Russian girls. I was like, so what? You're here. I'm going to rush and get one of you. I, don't, I mean, I've got yeah. plenty of melee around here. The melee were beautiful. And so yeah. since I was dating melee and Thai, right. I, I, I was good with it. I didn't, also didn't date Russian in Japan as well. I was like, uh, I don't right. know what's going up with you guys. So I'm going to leave you alone. Um, right. But you're definitely right about Kazakhstan girls. The, so when I was in Russia, um, the, the girl I dated at the university, she was Russian. But the number two girl that I was dating was Kazakh and Turk combo. Right, right. Yeah, and I, I, yeah. I was, I had some bad experience with her. I disappointed her a few times, so I never got really got to hook up with her. Right. Um. But the the Russian blood was different. So you're right about the Kazakh girls. There. Yeah. If, if I could just figure out a way to get there long term, oh God. Uh, like, I mean, like three or four yeah. months at a time, I would go. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the the well, I've 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 never been like the only people, the only my only interaction with Kazakh people were actually in China, right? Because they come to study Chinese or scholarships for free, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with East Africans, right? Like you know, China gives out scholarships to these different countries for goodwill and things like mm -hmm. that. So, meaning Kazakh and like Tajik, all the stands, whatever, I've only met through through here in China, but. Uh, you know, but uh, going back to Singapore, you know, I, I traveled there a lot just for vacation, hanging out. You know what I mean? Like, you, uh, there's a lot of Chinese Singaporeans that come here for business, and you, you, you know, you befriend them and you visit them back back in Singapore. Everybody speaks English and Chinese, so it was it was kind of seamless for me just to kind of interact. But I mean, it's just an amazing place. The women are gorgeous. I would mm -hmm. say, looks wise, if I had to rank them. They would definitely, uh, I would say they're probably in the top five, top five for Asian women. Because I, I would say, I think for black men, Japanese is number one. Like, Jap like Japanese is number one. I mean, just what they would do for you. Yeah, Jap Jap Japanese women would be number one, in my humble opinion. But I would say Singaporean women, as far as looks, they would be in top five. They would be in top five. As far as, like, exotic, um you know, that kind of Northeast Asian kind of look, right? And then Filipinos, like, I, I'm not attracted to Filipinos so much. I know people are, but just not my taste. But uh, Singaporean women are definitely top five. I would put J uh, Japan, South Korea after cosmetic surgery. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> 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 right, and then uh, probably, probably Cambodian girls, Thai girls and Singaporean girls. That that would be my top five ranking. On, on that note, on Singaporean women. Um, so uh, Theo mentioned that um, there's three groups there: um, Indian, Chinese, and Malay. Was that the same experience for you as well? Did you get more play from Malay women than Indian and Chinese women? Speak on that. We ain't signing ish. Uh well, okay. So I'll I'll, I'll tell you this, right? Like. I've only dated Asian women. I've only dated one black woman. I, everyone I've dated has always been Asian. So, it, like, so as far as like getting Asian women, it's it's always been easy for me because even in college, uh, even in college, because I went to undergraduate, I went to the University of Pennsylvania, Wharton, and I was dating a Japanese girl from um, Bryn Mawr, which is an all girls school. Right, so it, it, it's just it's just easy. But I will say this: uh, Malay women are a bit easier to get than mm -hmm. uh, Indian women, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In Indian women, the thing about it is, it's just they prefer white men because of the whole like caste system, right? For, but like, I'll take that back. For me, I think Indian women are the prettiest women in Asia. I'll take that back. Indian women than than uh, Japanese, but for me, I find that most of the Indian. Uh, I, I, of I, I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> me, <laughs> me, and, me, and, me and Phil disagree strongly about that. <laughs> no, bro. Yeah, no, bro. Japanese first, man. Japanese. Ja um, Jap I mean, Japanese is up there. Like for wife material, number one. Number one. There. I mean, yeah, they're up there, right? Like, like, yeah, they're beautiful. They're submissive. They're loyal as hell. You know, they're, they're up there. 
So yeah, yeah. I the thing I have about Japanese women is that if you want something that's if you want someone who's a little bit closer to the Western world, boom, Japan woman, you can't beat her because yeah. she's going to understand most Western concepts. So it's easier to communicate with her. You kind of know what you're getting. Um, yeah. If you have a more well, a little risk tolerance, and you want kind of an adventure, something kind of erotic. Mm-hmm. Well, Thailand is the place to go because you're like, God, oh my God, what happened? Um, yeah, there, that's that's just an amazing thing to go. Um, so it it matters your ability to ascertain risk. I didn't have the ability to ascertain risk with Thailand. That's why I didn't finally take a Thailand woman, a Thai woman, in, mm-hmm. in the end. Um, right. And then I, I I'm fluent in Japanese, like Tony. So it's easy, like Japanese, like boom, boom, like quick. Yeah, yeah. You know where you're gonna go. You know how this is gonna work, right? Right. right. Um, I didn't really know how it was gonna work with Thai, but what I yeah. had with Thai women was, good lord, good. Uh, anyway, keep on going. Keep on talking about Singapore right. women. I well, well I, I'll, I'll end with this point. I end with this. Like, so for example, if you want, like, for for most Asian women that I've came across, if you want to unlock. The, if you want to know like the master key to getting Asian women, you mm-hmm. just need to be soft. You just need to be like treat them kind and respectful. And secondly, you need to just be, be become like a father figure for them, right? Asian women love that shit for some reason. They love it when when they when they see you as a father figure, right? No because swearing, unlike, brother. yeah, no swearing. Uh, they, I carry on. Oh, I apologize. Oh. apologize. Apologize, apologize. So they they like it when you're uh, a father figure to them. Uh, for some reason, they find that highly attractive. And so most of the times when I'm approaching women, you approaching Asian women, right? I normally become their friend first for like maybe a month or so, and then we we'll end up dating. So like the process is like six, seven weeks, something like that, and then we will just end up dating because they they like that kind of father figure kind of situation and also it's for me um i always date women like that's about a 10-year gap right i find it if like a 10-year gap it's also uh much easier to, to date them and well i mean i don't date women wow. over 30 anyway so okay yeah. i'll think i date older women we don't date older women over here uh but i think right. tony Berry wants to add in something there but hold on tony um shout out to nick oh for the um uh, two dollar Canadian uh, super chat. Thank you, bro. Uh, paying my staying fee like I'm in a script club. <laughs> Shout out to future <laughs> script club. Shout out to future. <laughs> Yo, um, this dude is funny, man. I like Nico too. Nico is a uh, he's he's a real he's a real stand up character. That I be seeing him around. Shout out to Nico. Uh, uh, chime in, Tony. How you doing, brother? Yeah, yeah, brother. So I'm loving this. I'm loving this platform here, man. I'm loving what my man, my homeboy from North Philly, is talking about. <laughs> Theo, everybody, Jay. You know it. You know it. Um, you know what? Look, see, I've dated just about every Asian woman out there, man, and I gotta agree that with my man is that Japan, Japanese wives are the number one. Here's the thing with Thai that you gotta understand. See, when I started dating Thais. I was a young buck, man. I was like 17 years old. I was in the Air Force. They were just coming over from Vietnam and from Southeast Asia. That big influx of these Southeast Asian beautiful women just falling off the boat, falling off the airplanes, coming over, right? Young, pretty things. But what I noticed is that a lot of the wives would cheat on their husbands from Thailand. And like what Theo was saying, you have yeah. to, you you have that unsurety about where things would go. Because what they do is they'll treat you nice. That's the thing about Thai women. They'll treat you nice. They'll give you all the love and everything in the world. But when they get with their girls, they'll turn around and, and they'll treat the, another man nice too without you even knowing about it. So like when I was in Saudi Arabia, I noticed I didn't date any of these Thai women because they were married. And one thing I don't do, brothers, and I got my code, I never touch another man's woman. That's just not me. There's too many women out there. Mm-hmm. But these Thai women were trying to pick me up left and right. They were literally throwing it, stuff at me, man. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to keep it PG, trying to get me to go out with them. And I wouldn't. They're beautiful women. They're very playful. They're very nice to hang out and date and go out with. But if you're going to seriously marry one, which is probably why my homeboy is saying that he wouldn't consider them to be the top Asian women to marry, you have to have that wealth, man. You have to have a lot of funds because it's going to come down to having that money. If you don't have it, they will leave you. They will cheat on you. And I've seen this with a lot with ties. 
Speaking on Singapore, I was in Singapore, man, with the Malay and the, and the, the Mei Ling, man. I'll tell you right now, and you brothers might agree, ain't nothing better than the Chinese and the white girl in Singapore. Mm -hmm. yep. that mix, oh my goodness, man. I fell in love a thousand times when I was there, man, with these women. And they're mm. beautiful, man, and tall. They're hot, hot, body. hot, hot, yeah. You know, so yeah. I just wanted to put my two cents in on the Asian women. I know, like uh, Jay Bones was saying, Yo, uh, flip, uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, hold on, Tony. Are they checking for brothers? Uh, those, yeah, they are uh, checking for brothers. They check, everybody, all these women checking for brothers. Brothers are the number one commodity in the entire <laughs> world. Plus, everywhere brothers go, if you confident, you educated, like my homeboy, like Theo and them, Jay Bones, them say, you got to keep your head on right. If you know the game, you just you are in there. And another thing, my wife is 22 years younger than me. I don't date nobody, never date nobody older than me. Maybe one time I married a woman that was older than me, and that was the biggest mistake I made in my life. You keep <laughs> the women young, especially in Asia, because they don't respect you if, you if you're younger than them or the same age. They will listen to you just for Confucius, because Confucianism is big in them no matter what. You older than them, whatever comes out of your mouth is gold, especially if you back it up with that wealth. Can, can I say something really quickly? I just sure. want to say something. I want to say two things. First, number one, men age slower than women, right? When they say uh, women are more mature than uh, men, that's not true. Women just age uh, faster than, than men. And then with Asian women, Asian women, they hold their beauty on average. Some do better. They hold their beauty until about age 40. But as black men, if you eat right and keep yourself right, you're not going to age, right? You age the least out of everybody on the planet. So you can be a 50-year-old black man with a 25-year-old whatever woman, Asian woman, white woman, whatever, and you'll look you'll look comparable. No one will say that's your daughter as long as you eat right and keep yourself healthy, right? Because black people in general age the slowest and black men age the slowest out of everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. So even now I'm 42. When I go and talk to people, everybody thinks, oh, like you're 27. Right. They even think mm -hmm. I sound 27. Right. So when I'm dating mm -hmm. a girl 27, no one looks at me like, oh, you know, I've never had that comment. Right. So that's another thing. So when people are talking about like, oh, it's kind of wrong to date young. No, because we don't we age slower. Right. And I just wanted to leave that comment. No, no, you, you I agree with you, brother. You're actually right. And I always tell people that and I know that's true. And I tell a lot of brothers that are out there slopping around, drinking heavy, not taking care of their bodies. I said, brothers, all you got to do is take care of yourself. You're going to outlive a lot of these people. You're going to look better than a lot of these people. Mm -hmm. Brothers are already the best looking men out there, period, bar none, right? So the Asian women, the women around, That's they don't right. even know, they can't tell how old we are. I knew a brother that was 67 going to Thailand dating 18-year-old females. He'd go uh -huh. every year and he'd bring back with his little pictures of little 18, 19-year-old females from Thailand. And they didn't have a clue. This brother was in shape. He was 67. My cousin, yep. 59 years old. He gets them all. Yep. And I just want to say this. The only time I have ever worried about if she dates a black person was when I'm, when I'm trying to talk to another black woman, right? The most, the most finicky women, the most adverse women to black men is actually black American black women. Every other race, they're open. Really, they're open. So the only time that question ever pops up is like, oh, will that black American woman date a black man like me? That's not in the streets. That's not financial. ABW, we have forgotten them. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying that to the I'm saying that to the larger point. I'm saying that to the larger point of you don't really have to worry about whether or not a woman from another country would date a black man because nine times out of ten, it's yes. That's why I'm saying it to that point. That's yep. why I said, like, again, we, he asked the, the male to female ratio in Singapore. And I said, the only thing I thought was the number of Malay women and the number of Western men. That was it. Because I'm black and I know that I can go in there and do alpha status in Singapore. Right. I know I can do it in Thailand and in Japan as well. I don't even look at the p local population as as competition, I'm like, I cannot rule you. Hey, brothers, I got to sign yeah. off. I'll talk to y'all later, man. If I'm back, if I'm done, I'll get back on the stream later, brothers. Okay. Right, take care, Tony. Tony. Let me bring uh, yeah, in, yes. um, Same. Uh, I also uh, have uh, to hold sign on. off. Okay. All right. We ain't signing ish. Uh, reach out to me by email, brother. Let's set up a live stream regarding okay, we'll your experiences do. in China, bro. Please ASAP. Okay, brother? Okay, we will do. All right. Take care, everyone. All right. See you, brother. Um, Straight Saw 23. How you doing, brother? Doing good, IP. How, you, how, how about yourself? 
Hey, I'm doing very well, uh, brother. Um, shout out to Theo, Jay Bones, Tony64, and the rest of the panel, Sean Camp, and those who have contributed for the intel they've given so far. Uh, are you enjoying the stream so far, Straight Soul? Yeah, yeah, it's a great stream. I just had two questions, one for Theo. I don't know if I kind of came in the stream a little late, so I don't know if you covered it already, but uh, mm -hmm. in Singapore, like, can you get around easily just with English, or would you have to learn the local language? English. Okay. In English. It's the same as Hong Kong. Um, mm. you, sure, in Hong Kong, you need, might need some Cantonese. Yeah, you need the Cantonese, but English is fine. Um, you could do everything in English in Singapore. Oh, like, okay. literally everything. Like, okay. you, can shag in, you can shag in English. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> and then my, also, my second question was uh, for IP. I, I know Tony was just in here, but uh, I was wondering, can you do, like, I'm traveling to Morocco soon, so I'm, I've seen your previous videos on Morocco, so mm -hmm. I was wondering, can you do, like, a full detail video on Morocco by any chance, or...? Oh, the, the video I did is is um is uh, 25. I've got two videos in Morocco. One of it is 25 minutes long, and the other is, I think, 12 minutes long. Was that not enough intel for you, brother? Yeah, I was just wondering, like, like, uh, like uh, I seen your video. I was just wondering if there was, like, other spots that you went to, like, other cities or... Uh, so I was just in Marrakesh. I didn't go to Casablanca. I didn't have time for that. So Marrakesh, mm -hmm. uh, get away. I had a great time, bro. Um, I the, the the intro I gave in those videos. That's all you need, brother. Uh, okay. If you can learn some French, that would be helpful. If you're a Muslim as well, that'd be very helpful. But you're probably not a Muslim. Um, no, no, not Muslim. I speak Arabic. Ooh. I think they speak different Arabic out there. Oh, bro, you, you're gonna do well, bro. If you're Muslim and you know a bit of French, bro, you're gonna do fine in Morocco. Oh, okay, perfect. So don't worry about it. You know, use um use Tinder. Um, be careful with cold approaching um, in, in the day because it's a Muslim country. I have to be very careful there. But you can, go, if, if you want a cold approach, go to bars, go to clubs, and go to like uh, bowling avenues. There's a lot of single women there. So that's why I used to get Moroccan women when I was in Morocco. But every intel you, you want in Morocco is in those uh, two videos, bro. Okay? Oh, okay. Thank you. No problem, straight so. Uh, brothers, get the likes up, please, and feel free to send more super chats if you are enjoying this live stream. Your support is greatly appreciated. It's almost 4 a.m. here in the UK. I want to keep going because brothers are enjoying the stream. Let me bring in uh, Sean Camp. How are you doing, brother? Hey, what's what's going on, guys? Can you hear me? Yeah, we're in clear, brother. Oh, okay. Um, hey, what's up, Theo? Hey there. What's up? Uh, Hey, Matt Musk, man, remember you had me laughing when we was talking about Belarus on uh, Messenger. You said they vampires over there. <laughs> you had me down with that. But, um, yeah, I've been to Singapore twice. Um, beautiful. Um, um, it's more so of a state, like D.L. said. And actually, it is actually a Malayan state. It's like how he said. It was like Hong Kong is to China, but um, I mean, man, like he said, it's just if you go to Clock Quay on the Marina Bay Sands, the Botanical Gardens, I mean, it's just Orchard Road, it, it's just women all over, so it's no problem. You just being outside, you're going to see them, so <laughs> it's no problem meeting them there. And the last time uh, I was there was in 2017, and I noticed there was an uptick of time filipino women there at that time hmm. mm, mm. yeah that makes sense because their economy is going to crap yeah because the so. first the first time i was there was 2014 and i didn't see as many time filipinos but man when i was there in 2017 it, it was crazy like i was like wow yeah they, they, mm. they, have, they definitely have a problem there but um so what did you think about melees? Oh, beautiful. I, I mean, like I said, um, because I got a similar complexion to you, I'm probably a little lighter. And especially some of the Indonesian women, they were like, they, I mean, you're not going to just walk up on them or they not going to walk up on you. But like, if you're in the market or something, they'll yeah. look at you, then you just start talking and just having small talk and they'll be into you. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean... I thought I thought the Indonesians like came on a little more to me than the Malayan women, but both of them was very easy and approachable to talk to. 
Yeah, this is another area where cold approach actually works very well. And I, I never really thought about one area. Um, exactly. I, I was kind of like, do I want her or not? Do I want to go for her? So I, I usually advocate not dating inside the office. But you mm -hmm. see, like, the, the woman I dated was actually a secretary inside the office. Okay. And so I violated that idea, but I knew <laughs> that she wanted, yeah. I knew that she wanted me. So I was like, let's go for yeah. it. Um, exactly. You know, they give you the look. And it, I got the look all over the place in Singapore. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it's like I said, I mean, and of course, when I was there in 2017, I, I don't know what it is, man. I, I just have a special connection with Thais. I mean, I've been to Thailand probably, Jesus, yeah, probably like 11 or 12 times. That's how much I love it. <laughs> but even yeah. in Singapore, it's just like, yeah, I, I don't know what it is. It's just like I connect with them. And I'll say... The ties and the Brazilians, if you want to talk about the B room action, top two, hands down, so far from what I experienced. Yeah. John Camp, I have a question for yeah. you, uh, real quick. Um, when you were in Singapore, um, how did the woman treat you there? Like, were they, did they want to get with you very quickly, the Malay oh, woman oh, or Indonesian no, woman? No, 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 like, um, they're not going to get with you quick like that, but I'll tell you, like, if you would them, like, for about two, three days straight, then you can get yeah. with them. But it's not like you just going, when you beat them, it's like you're going to get them at night. Nah. And then another thing, they want to take you around, too. They really want to show off, like, their city to you. Like, because mm -hmm. I didn't, Theo, did you go to that area called Sentoso? It's like yes. a beach within, yeah, I didn't even know about that. And so a girl took me there, and it was, like, really nice. It's like a beach in the city, but they got other activities. Like, they got, like, a little playground obstacle course in the water there. It's really nice. And, um, yeah, man, so they'll chill with you, take you all over the city, and that's their way of getting to know you. And right. Then after that, yeah, it's like, if you're cool, I mean, yeah, you, you can get them. But, it's, yeah, I mean, if you would them. Especially like I'll say like if you were them on that third day, you you can you know yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, Sean Ken, what, yeah. Okay, yeah. go on, Phil. No, I mean it's my mom was the second date for both of them, and I wasn't even trying. Exactly, they, the suggested. they suggested exactly. Right, right. Because so you they're cause, suggesting you're like okay. Because because especially the first time over there, because you know a lot of them like how Theo said you you don't know how deep deep down to uh the muslim culture so the first time there it was like i was kind of scared like i ain't want to you know suggest it or anything but yeah they suggested it yeah so sean camp what was your method of uh meeting women in singapore did you call approach did you go to bars what was how did you um, meet called call the approach, call the approach. Okay. and um and now the second time there, it was like a mix called the pros and the bars. I mean, they got bars on Orchard Road. Uh, the Marine, I met abroad at the Marina Sands because they have day parties up there. Did you do that, Theo, at the hotel? Always. Uh, yeah, yeah, they always got, I mean, and they're, and they're women, they're even like European women there at the Marina Sands. I'm pretty sure you guys probably saw it's like that. Hotel with yeah. the big swimming pool on the roof. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. can meet so, them all day there. I mean. So always in the hotel areas, that's where you can yeah. date for a long time. And mm. if you went to another hotel, they wouldn't really check you because they knew you were a foreigner. So they would assume that you're, you were there for a purpose. So as exactly. long as you went, to, you went to a bar or someplace, you got a drink, you sat there and you looked respectable. They don't question you. Yeah, 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 they're, they're fine yeah. with you. And uh, and as far as dressing, man, like Theo said, so hot. I typically wore like shorts, um, in a polo shirt. Like, um, during the day, you know, you can have a um, you can have a dry fit polo or something like that, you know, some mm -hmm. um, cargo shorts or something. And just a nice pair, you can't even wear sneakers, but you know, they 
they got to be a nice pair. I'm not wearing Jordans there, but I'll have, like, some nice no, low-cut sneakers, uh, clean, presentable. Then at night, if you go out, you can put on, like, some linen shorts and, like, a nice T-shirt or something real loose <laughs> and just go and go chill because it's so hot over there. You don't need to wear a suit or anything like that. No, no. So we had to – sometimes we had to wear it because of formal business. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was doing had the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so I was doing like million dollar contracts, mm-hmm. so I had to wear that suit jacket. But I would try to get rid of that suit jacket as fast as I Immediately. could because yeah, it would be soaked with sweat. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. you have to go take it to the hotel and have them dry clean it. I'm like, Ugh. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like all those places. I mean, like Thailand, the Philippines, Cambodia. They're just like nasty hot. <laughs> so you you just want to be comfortable, man. Yeah. Right, thanks for that, uh, Sean Camp. Uh, thanks for calling in, brother. You gave some great intel there. Thank you very much, brother. Um, oh, no problem, man. Yes, bro. Um, brothers, feel free to call in. Um, Suki Hana. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll address that with, with you, Jay Bones, afterwards. Um, brothers, feel free to call in um, if you want to ask Phil or WAF any questions. Phil, how long can you stay in this stream? I don't want to obviously take your time. I'm fine. I'm good. I can go as long as you want. Um, okay. I just I just wrote it to the chat. The, the Thai girl I met was in Tampines. I think that's how you said it. Um, that was a kind of a residential area, but that's where a data center was for me. That's where I was actually working sometimes. So the girl, Thai girl was in that area, Tampines. And then the um, uh, the um, melee girl, she was from a Ruffles Street. That's where the skyscrapers are. That's where I was doing uh, more business deals as well. So there are two different areas. All right, great, great intel there. I just, I just researched that Tampin shopping mall on Google. That's mm-hmm. a very nice mall. That's a very yeah. clean mall. <laughs> so yeah, so she had, the restaurant was in there and that's, Actually, it was for lunch. I was just going in there um, to get Thai food, and that's why I met her and talked with her. And you know, we kept on talking afterwards. That's that's how it happened. So, because I was in the Mandarin Oriental, which was a very good hotel, um, she knew where that was. So she wanted, yeah, yeah, and she wanted to be there. So she offered to go there. Yeah, that's how it happened. I mean, that's just, this is usually. I wasn't even trying, man. It, it was like kind of just like just kind of given to me, like gifted. Um, it's, it's not that hard to do there. Um, you just, you really need to be respectable. You, you, you don't need to play that hard. It's kind of like, again, like Prague, you didn't really need to play that hard, um, to, to get a girl as long as you're respectable and, um, you have a good image, good look, strong vibe, then the woman is definitely you can most women will definitely talk with you at least and it's just easy to get multiple women to talk with you and of course i've met more than one thai woman and one more more than one melee just that i was just very successful with these two during that time period fantastic intel uh on that feel much appreciated um Brothers, feel free to call in again. There's space on the panel. Um, Tokyo 64 appears that he's busy. Um, call in, brothers. Uh, feel free to call in. Um, let's see what it's saying in the chat. Um, let me let me go to uh, Jay Bones again. For, yeah, I'm sure you want to chime in. What's up, Jay Bones? Yeah, man. Like I said, IP, let's... Uh... I'm going to keep my mouth shut because I have a big feeling that Theo is going to kill the uh, the Thai uh, the, the Thai live stream when we finally set it up, bro. But trust me, I'm 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 going to go ahead. I, I was I was actually sitting back and just watching it and I'm like I guess, you know, everybody's obsessed with the whole Japanese thing, but trust me when I tell you, bro, when when we get the Thai intel out there, some of you brothers are going to turn this thing. This thing is going to turn 360, trust me, bro. <laughs> Mm. Can't wait for that, man. I'm, Can't wait I, for that. I'm trying to think of polite words to use, but I never had women who were so satisfied with me outside of Thai. It, they were just satisfied. They had that look. They had the expression. They were. It, they weren't faking. They were just satisfied. And I was just looking at them like, 
damn, how did I do that? Like, I didn't have to work that hard. Like, what the hell are you faking? No, you're not faking at all. I learned from the Filipinos, so if they're faking or not, um, they're not, they're definitely not faking. I was just like, good Lord, this is easy. Uh, Tony, so, Tony yeah. Berry, um, what, what was your experience uh, dating? Actually, no, Tony, tell us your background. Tell us your relationship sorry, with Singapore. I'm guessing you worked there for a bit. And what was your experience with uh, dating Singaporean women? Was it Malay, Indian, Chinese? Speak on that, Tony. Yes, yes, brother. So I went. To, I was in Singapore, man. I was there on a study tour. So I went down there for 10 beautiful days to Singapore and Malaysia. And man, as soon as I got off the plane, I checked in my hotel. I started hit, picking up on the, uh, the girls that were working at the front desk. And, um, you know, excuse me, like the girl was like Chinese. I think she was Chinese mixed with Malay. And they have some weird names, man. Like this girl's name was Hasalinda. I've never heard of <laughs> Hasalinda, right? I know, right? So, what, Hasalinda, what's that, right? So hooked up with her, man. And then I started hitting the clubs, hooked up with a lot of women in the clubs, ran around with some Singaporeans. I'll tell you, they are very sophisticated, man. Bro, these women are sophisticated. And what got me was I didn't think they would like brothers because I was like, okay, I didn't see a lot of brothers at the time I was there. And I thought, okay, you know how brothers get to a place and you don't see many of us and you think, are they checking for brothers? What's going on? What's this with that? And next thing you know, man, they're like, yeah, let's go. Let's talk. Let's hang out. Mm -hmm. it, it was kind of a weird feeling because it kind of reminded me of being in Tokyo, but with taller women. Because a lot of the mm. Singaporeans that I ran into, they were they were like five, seven, five, eight. I was pretty surprised at how tall these women were. And what mm -hmm. was so beautiful, brothers, man, you know what's beautiful? I don't know if Theo mentioned this. When you hear a Chinese girl talk in Singapore, man, with a British accent. Oh, yeah. my God. Whoa. That oh. Is, they, 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 oh. I went out with a couple girls. So I went out with a couple Singaporeans, one I stayed in the hotel, and another girl that I had met at a restaurant. And then I went out with a Malay girl. When I was in Malaysia, man, I went over to Malaysia and hooked up with this girl. Because she kept, you know, we were at a museum, and she was torn. And she kept hang, you know, hanging around me. And she, I was like, why does she keep hanging around me? And then I found out, man, she wanted to go out with me. You know, and you got to be careful Malaysia a little bit because they got the Muslim scene going on, too. You know, because Malaysia is a Muslim country. Not all of them are Muslim, but but they have some really strict laws in Malaysia. Like, you, right. you don't bring no drugs, of course, which we ain't going to do because that's a death penalty in Malaysia. Stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I, IP, let me let me let me let me let me tell you something, bro. They have a they have a small they have like a small population of Chinese girls that they used to live in. Um. I think some of them actually used to live in Liverpool over there in England and mm -hmm. they go to school they go to school here at NYU and those Chinese girls when they speak with a British accent I swear to you IP you will it's 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 like it's just completely mess it's it's just mesmerizing bro it is mesmerizing damn it is it is completely mesmerizing bro I swear yeah when I heard it too like I was like, you, you don't even need cosmetics. You just need to say yeah. my name. Like, <laughs> that's it. I'm, I'm going to go. That's yeah. it. Like, that, and they hot. smell good, man. They smell good. Oh, you go out with them. Good. They dress nice. And, and like I said, they're sophisticated, man. They're not like these. I don't know how to explain it, man. It was hard to explain. It was hard to get used to them. It's hard to like, is this real? Is this really happening? That's the yeah. whole time I was listening to them. Like, is this really happening? Yeah, yeah, tell me, man. That's really that's how I felt. Um, that's how I felt the first time over there. I don't know where that noise coming from. That noise coming from. Yeah, that's what, yeah. It's crazy. I think I think that's uh I think that's IP. He probably left his mic on. Oh yeah, yeah. IP, is that you? Hello. He's over. I feel with him. What's up, brothers? We heard some we stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was going. Yeah, um, I was going to say something. You okay? Um, yeah. What happened, brothers? What happened? Sorry. I think you okay. We thought we thought a burglar had uh, broke into the house and beat you up or something. It was a lot of noise going on in the back. <laughs> oh, sorry, man. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> hey, hey, tell me, man. I, I most definitely feel you, Tony, because that's how I felt the first time over there. Over, it. cause I just stand up with this. Cause I was just going over there, really, just to sightsee. Because I, I went there, like both of the times I went to Singapore, I had another trip to Thailand. So 
it was just um I you know I just wanted to go to like see chill, but it's like it's hard to explain when they flirting, which is kind of sneaky in a sense. Yeah, but you'll you'll pick up on it though. Yeah, but it's like yeah they'll they'll look you'll catch them looking and, and uh, like I said to me one of the best places to meet them is like at the food market. I mean yeah yeah, yeah the food I mean, market all over yeah. you know. They're right there. I mean, they're just yeah. communicating. It's so easy to just, like pick them up. It's like almost like a university, like like um, meal house cafeteria. You can just straight out yeah. start talking yeah. to women. And yeah. um and um uh, what was that? I think it was called Boogus or Boogus Street. Um, yeah. Which part? Yeah, Orchard they Park were Road. all over there. Yeah, yeah. Orchard Park Road, Clockway. I mean, the raffles. The raffles. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, some most definitely, yeah, man. But after, especially the second time when I went out, I was just totally comfortable there <laughs> because, like, you, you can know, you pick up a lot of Filipinos yeah. there too. You know, in the Philippines, that, that's what I was just saying. When you, um, when you went off when I came on the first time, that's what I was just telling, um, the panel. I was like, when I went there in 2014, it was a little bit of them at times, but the last time I was there was 2017. It was a lot more time Filipinos there. When, the last time I went, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So they're they're con- the Thailand and well, Thailand not so bad, but the Philippines is the, the economy is going to the toilet. Yeah, and oh, so yeah. Yeah. you got more they exports. So the yeah. number one, um, like woman export country in Asia is the Philippines. Philippines. Yep. Like they're oh, yeah. they're Y'all, trying to yeah. marry out like crazy. And they so are, it's easy man, they are all over there. the place. Yeah. yeah, I mean they in the Middle East heavy. Um, yeah, they just all over man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you want you got to know about the Philippines, man. One thing about the Philippines, I know we're not on the Philippines yet, but and I did, I think I did something on the Philippines a few months ago with, with IP. There's no, there's no in between, man. Either they're beautiful or they're ugly. There's no in between. Oh, they yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I've been there, Tony. Oh, that's Sean Camp. Oh, yeah, Sean. Sean, I didn't even see the name. Sean Camp, what up? <laughs> Ain't not much, man. I've been talking to your boy Derek too, man. Yo, Derek yeah. be chopping it up. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, man, I, I, I've been over there. So, um, pretty much, yeah, man. You did all with that, what you just say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. But um, one quick thing, um, you can hang out in Makati late, Theo. Um, Where? What? In, in Makati, in in Manila, the Makati. Makati, yeah, Makati of course. Out, yeah, yeah. Makati? You, you can yes. hang out late there. But yeah, any other place outside of that, you right, yeah, you might get jacked. <laughs> like, <laughs> they got Shoe yeah. Mart, the big Shoe Mart Center up there, man, in Makati. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Philippines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Philipp- I, I have stories of the Philippines because, yeah. yeah, that's where I went kind of cuckoo. Oh, feel, yeah. feel, feel, feel. Save, save the stories, bro. Save the stories, bro. <laughs> we wanna, like, no surprises, bro. No surprises. It's coming very soon, brothers. Don't worry, it's coming yeah. very soon. But, yeah, um, well, yeah, that's yeah. what I was doing there, literally, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wait, uh, that, uh, IP. That was my purpose there. What's up, Dave Owens? Yeah, IP. Do we, uh, do we got a what do you call it? Do we got a um a Philippines stream coming up? Oh, I wanted. I didn't want it. Uh, yes, but we have it. I, I didn't want to give it away, but we have it coming very soon. Okay. Yeah. Is okay. Oh, All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I get. Saw, I saw it, IP. I, I saw you had it. Yeah. Coming up. You yeah. saw it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that should be next week, brothers. Uh, me and Theo got the Philippines stream coming up. Hopefully, we get yeah, the, the Taiwan I'm coming go- up. I'm Go gonna. Ahead, I'm gonna. Up, I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna invite a couple of the uh, the boys on there too, cause um, the uh, my brother that was just, my brother that was just up here, um, uh, we ain't signing. He actually he um after he graduated Harvard, he actually went to China. But the other two brothers from the um from the Ivy League schools, they actually in Philippines. So I'm gonna invite them to come up then. Mm, yes, that's yeah. what's up, bro. Thank you. Yes. yes. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna drop um when you do the ET open, I'm gonna call back in on that. Um, I'm very familiar with them. I'm I'm in the DC area, so they mm. they had the largest population in America and, and over here. 
So I can drop, you know, when you guys drop that, I'm going to call in. Yeah. And I was actually there in 2019, too. But um, in the 90s, I, I had a run with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that should be coming very – it was meant to happen this week, but yeah. – um, the guests uh, had to reschedule, so hopefully we'll get that done next week. I'm, I want, I'm, ex- I'm looking forward to it as well because, yeah. obviously, you know, we want to. Some brothers are into black women, you know, so we want to get alternative black women that are feminine and not the Western black women. So I oh, told yeah. you, half black, so half black Japanese women, black Japanese women, Ethiopian women, brothers want to see that man, some feminine black women. So I thought I'd set up a stream regarding uh, Ethiopian women. So we'll see how that goes. I'm excited for it. Then we got the stream uh, coming for Thailand, me and Theo. Uh, I think that oh. might be next week or the week I got after. some coming on too, IP. I reached out to oh. you about that high value um, thing I sent to you on uh, Twitter. Uh, yes, bro. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 re- I replied back to you, Tony. Okay, I'll I, check it out. I'll check it out. So let me know. I can actually put you in for next week if you want to speak on that. So yeah, I need to know what day is good for you. And then we'll go on from there. Um uh, Tony Berry. Uh, um, I can most definitely drop some intel on Thailand. I mean, one of my favorite spots in the world. So, oh, yeah. Mean, yeah, yeah. We got we got um we got two brothers actually. IP that um um they they live in they live in the Philippines and are married to Filipino women. So that should be they live in Manila actually. So that should be good. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So the thing with like again with Filipinas was that I knew that if I lost one, I can go get another one. Like, it wasn't that much of a loss. Whereas with with Thai, it was more of an addiction. I mean, yeah. it was more like, yeah. like this, this is a problem. Like, if I lose her, like, this is going to be a problem because I might go nuts. I mean, I might go get another one, but my God, like, she actually has an imprint. Um... Whereas Filipino, oh, man, you're like, yeah, I mean, you're you're good, but if you act out of pocket, I go get another one. Like, I'll, I'll just replace you. Um, Japanese is more like my soul has disappeared without you. Um, mm-hmm. It is it's yeah. much much more of a deeper loss. You kind of send it back, like, yeah, the reflection of my soul is gone, where my soul has disappeared. What do I do now? Like, I don't know. Like, I I don't know. This is a pretty bad situation. Um, so yeah, they do have differences. Um, yeah, and again, we'll, we'll talk about this again. Um, I yeah. say if you're gonna get, if you're gonna get married, do Japanese. Um, if you can figure out how to deal with the risk with Thai women, oh God, yes, we have to figure yeah, out. Yeah, I, I think I think with Thailand, it's just where you meet them at. Uh, I mean, of course, like you don't want um, like get in no relation with, with somebody and Patty. Sorry, um, hold on, Sean. Sh- Sh- Can finish your point there, Phil. So, marriage a Japanese woman, um, yeah. having fun, Filipina woman. Carry on, uh, Phil. Yeah, I would say having fun, Filipina and Thai. Um, but if if you can manage the risk, that the whole thing is. Well, we'll talk about this later. You have to manage the risk. If you don't know how to manage the risk with Thai, they're only fun. If you can manage the risk, go for it. Um, but yeah. you can you can definitely manage the risk. The, the, the Japanese is pretty easy to navigate, figure out what's going on. She'll tell you they're not. She's not playing around. It's it's pretty easy to figure this woman out. So yeah, yeah. that's why I say marry Japanese. Yeah, I, and I want to touch base on that too. And, and I know I watched it, and I know we don't plug other sites, but I watched another YouTube station. And they were talking about, you know, high value men paying for paying for sex. So here's the thing. What brothers need to understand is is, is when you start getting in a relationship with these women, yes, I, I still believe today, and even though I date a lot of different Asians, that Japanese are the number one for wife. Now, if you have a taste in your mouth for these for other Asian groups like Thai, Filipino, then just go on and pay for it. And the reason why I say that, and I know that not all the brothers gonna agree with this, but the reason why I'm saying that is because you don't want to make a decision of to marry a woman based on their sexuality or their sex, you know what I'm saying? Or their body or whatever the case may be, because the, the overall picture, the, the whole block, a Japanese woman bar none is going to be your best choice for a wife. Cause she's, she's like clay. You can pull it either way, shape or form. And they'll stay with you. My wife was with me with $3 in the bank. When I was struggling back in the recession in 08, 09, my wife stayed with me, did not leave. Didn't even think about leaving. I can't say that about every other Asian woman out there. I really can't say that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's correct. Yeah, I agree. 
No, no, yeah. No. Yeah, that's a pretty accurate way of doing it. What, what can I say? Um, so, yeah, you, know, just gotta, you gotta be practical. You gotta be practical with the situation. So if you go to high value, if you're just Henry, if you get hitting $150,000 a year, somewhere around there, mm-hmm. then your Japanese woman is gonna give you more bang for the buck. Um, yeah, the, the Filipina and the Thai are gonna be more of an adventure. If you could do melee, it's a good woman, but bringing her over you, again, you gotta. I don't think there's gonna be that much risk, but you have to ascertain the risk. Not the risky one is the Thai woman. Yeah, Thais are risky. Yeah, you have to really figure out like what risk level you're at, um, and that's why risky, you kind of risky. Look, how risky? How risky in what way? Feel she can go bang someone else. Yeah, oh. I agree with you on that. Yes, I've yeah. seen it. Not agree. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I just want to add, yeah, like I actually know some guys who, you know, brought Thai and Filipino women back. Um, um, now from the guys, some of the Filipino stuff I don't want to. Um, then I know one guy, um, you know, one of the Thai girls stuff I don't want, but the other ones, they're pretty much, you know, it's all in relationships. But I will say the one guy who brought the Thai. And I think the Filipinos, they got them, like, from Angeles City and Patty in Thailand. Oh, no! And, all, and, yeah, and those are, like, the process to her. So I'm like, what you think was going to happen? You know what I'm saying? So it, you got to, in Thailand and the Philippines, you got to know where you're eating these women at, too. That's a big key factor as well. You, you got to you gotta vet these, you got to vet these girls. You know, that, that's just the thing. Yeah. There's a lot of... There's a lot of amateur yeah. hour because one of the things about it is that a lot of brothers yeah. don't travel. A lot of them aren't sophisticated. So it's like, you know, oh, here I go. I'm, I'm on, I got my passport. I'm going to just drop off in this country and meet anybody. But it's not like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, you got to yeah, learn to vet these hard. girls. Yeah, you got to learn to vet these yeah. girls, man. Well, that's what me and Theo were always talking about. Theo and I, when we, when we chop it up sometimes, we always talk about the Japan thing about how we want to really educate brothers on Look, this ain't no game. You just can't get yeah. off in the Rita Airport and or Haneda or kicks and think you're gonna kick it. You gotta have yeah. your stuff, man. You gotta have your game down because these yeah. women are serious there. Um, Tony, yeah. you said something about how um Singaporean women are sophisticated. Is that mm-hmm. sophisticated in a good way or in a bad way? Because in the West, if you meet a sophisticated woman, more likely to be a feminist, masculine. I have all this money. I don't need a man. Or is it? In, what do you mean? Or is it in a, in a good way in terms of she's interesting? She has different interests. She likes anime. Well, or she's she's interested. In, it's in a good way because what, what you're going to notice about the Singaporean girls is they're very educated. Yeah. So they're articulate. So so you can sit right. there and talk to them about Beethoven, and they'll come back and say something about Beethoven, or you can talk to them about Picasso, or you can talk to them about Monet, and they know who Monet is. They know what what they're saying, and they know what they're talking about. They're not just nodding their head. Like a lot of white girls in America, they don't know nothing about it, but they'll nod their head. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they're not responding. Well, Yeah, so like the Filipina and Thai have no idea what you're talking about. They're not sophisticated. No. They're not. They're going to be like, what the hell, man? Like, just do me again. So, <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the best bet for Thailand, um, to, to, you know, meet somebody like, you know, in Bangkok, you know, they're going to be the more sophisticated type out there because that's where a lot of the companies are. Um, I met some cool ones up in Chiang Mai, too. So, um, yeah. So, but like Phuket, Patty, and nah, I, they, you don't even. They garbage girls over there. Pat- yeah. Yeah. Patty. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Garbage. No. Yeah. And, and, and Phuket is okay because you can meet. Um, it's a lot of international tourism over there, a lot of Australian women there, um, European. So it's like a mix there. Yeah, is that uh, is this uh, Singapore or Thailand? The Thailand. It's Thailand. Yeah. yeah. So these let, places, Phuket, Patiaz, and Thailand. Let, let's keep yeah. it on Singapore. Uh, Singapore. Okay. Uh, on this stream, and uh, we'll have we'll, we'll save everything for the Thailand stream in the future. Yeah. Let's keep on Singapore. I, but I'm happy. I was asked people about this this thing, and I thought I had this experience in Singapore. I was trying to get with this Indian girl because you know they got little India in Singapore. They right? got little India over there. there. Yeah, the neighborhood. But, but yeah. I just I felt I felt like the Indian girls were kind of like teasers. I did you? No, yeah, I I just hands off. 
I looked yeah. at him and I was like, there's nothing really good going on with you. I just don't uh. see it. I, I, no, I'm not going to go for it. And then we're, where we're hearing about feminism in India right now, I'm, a, I, I'm like, listen, you're a no-go. I'm not even going to let you. I'm not going to deal with you. So, I mean, I'm, let other guys do it. I'm not going to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Feminism even in India. Oh, my goodness. Ugh. Yeah. Tell you they this say, Western, they say that the next, the next big red pill country is going to be India. Yeah, it is. Oh yeah, yeah. it's 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 pretty it's pretty bad in India right now. IP um, there's a uh, yeah, their 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 suicide rate amongst the men is very high, because it's um the, the laws they're twisting up the laws very three sixty, and things are going really really bad for the men. They they got um, they got guys over there paying for child support, and. If they can't pay for child support, they're basically arrested, and some of them are getting like twenty years for not paying child support. You know, India has some really, some really, really strange, crazy type of laws over there, and the the women the women are generally kind of like taking over. You know, they're they're kind of oh. it, it's turning it's turning into like a real super liberal type of environment. That's why right. that's why that's why you just you know it, I I don't have anything against anybody IP but we have so much options from my personal experience bro just stay away from Indian women I, I hopefully we never have a live stream about them because I would never join in that it's no. just a waste of yeah. time no, yeah. Yeah. no that's it's a waste of time nah. it's a waste yeah. of time <laughs> I, 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 mean, yeah. I think um I, I think uh, IP you you guys got a lot of Indians over there in um in England I'm pretty sure you've seen their behaviors because I've heard a lot of them a lot of those Indians in England are very snobbish i heard yeah. a lot of them yeah the women and the men are incredibly snobbish we don't deal with them that much man it's no it's mostly uh black white and some east asian uh things that brothers go for we don't deal with indian over here yeah. in the uk man nah and also most brothers don't even go for indian women man. <laughs> we yeah, just don't. yeah the, yeah the majority the majority here a lot of them don't even marry yeah, a lot of a lot of them don't marry Indian women, or we don't don't really. They not they're not really at the top of, because you know you know what it is too. I'm glad um Tony I think Tony or Theo said that when it comes to the Indian thing, it's kind of like Filipino women. Either they're really hot or they're really ugly. Yeah, that's but true. yeah, yeah either yeah. they're really that's how Indian that's how Indian women are. They're either they're really super ugly or they're they're really super hot. But the majority of the time, their behaviors are very very disgusting. I I know. Yeah. Back, Mm, I will say uh, one thing on them Indian girls though in Vancouver, Canada. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah, Vancouver, Canada. Yeah. I know they they check for brothers they, heavy there. They checking for brothers in Vancouver. Yeah, yes. no, they, no, they, no, they, no. they do check for brothers. Uh, huh? <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, my best friend. I, I know. I'm good. Of, sorry, Sean Camp. Uh, I know. I'm good. Uh, authority that in Vancouver, it's a different world out there for brothers, especially with, with Indian women. But I, <laughs> me, not really my cup cup of tea. You know, I, I'll be real. But if brothers, if that's what brothers want to go for in Vancouver, then it's fine. But I know they do check for brothers there. Uh, carry on, show camp. Um, yeah, I was still some one of my best friends. I actually dated an Indian girl, um, but she moved, um, and that's why they broke up. That was the only time I ever seen a brother dating one, and he actually worked with her, so that's how that happened. But he actually dated her for like three years. I mean. She treated them good. I mean, so this one would I feel, I guess, if they really like you, they'll treat you good, like you know any other woman. But um, yeah, um, my friend, he actually had one for like three years. I think it's um for us, it's mostly um religious and family stuff. I know they're very family orientated, and uh, mm -hmm. it's a lot of um different politics with it when it when it comes to family, which is why brothers don't yeah brothers don't really yeah. go for them. But but when it comes to like you know Japanese women, uh, Ukrainian women, if you're just a good person, um, and it, it wouldn't be a problem. But when it comes to Indian, it's mostly family stuff. They don't want a brother in their family, so that's why I don't really get involved in that. I was gonna but, sorry, I was gonna interject for a minute, IP. Um, so in America, we got four point one million. You know me and the numbers guys. Y'all know me, our numbers guy. We got 4.1 million Indians, or 4 million, I'm sorry, 4 million Indians. They're the second biggest Asian group in the United States. Indian, if you understand this, they are the highest income earners in our country. They have the mm. highest household income. It's like well over $120,000 a year per Indian family, right? So they're, and they come from a caste system. 
So a lot of the Indian women won't even look at brothers because they consider you to be at the bottom of the totem pole. And they know they know the numbers, too. See, I mean, mm -hmm. everywhere I go, and I live in the Seattle area, we got a lot of Indians out here that are affluent. I was just at Ikea today with my family before I got back. And you see mostly Indians over there spending that money. And they won't even look at you. They won't even pay attention to you. And I do the same thing. I won't pay attention to them or look at them either. It's not yeah. that I don't, I'm against oh, Indians. Okay, let me, let me cut. Yes. Come in here. So I yes. noticed that I would say in Seattle, that was also true with Indian women. However, in Dallas, which isn't that far from me, there's a large population of Indian women, and they would go into the gyms looking for black men. Whoa! They saw this continually, and I was in like various like what is it Orange Theory Fitness. There's a lot of Indian women looking for a black guy. Wow. It's all the same thing. And they were hunting them. They were like, oh, yeah, you're a personal trainer? Yeah, I'm available at seven. They want muscular black guys to do them. And so the Indian men were complaining about this. And this is part of their red pilling. They're like, what the hell do we do? Because these black, these, these muscular black guys are banging our women. And yeah. I, looked, I looked at the situation. And I was like, I wouldn't want an Indian woman. You could have them. Like, I'm not dealing with you women. But, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's definitely that's definitely uh, uh, right on point, Theo. It, here's here's the truth about it. The truth about it is that a lot of those Indian women IP, they are checking for brothers, but brothers are just not checking for them. Yeah, you understand right. what I'm saying? Yeah, they're they're chasing us hard. A lot of the NYPD cops they bang Indian women like 24 seven. Whoa. Yeah, and and yeah, in New in New York, a lot of those NYP they be they be throwing Indian women back and forth like trash on a damn street in Manhattan. But the yeah, but the truth <laughs> about it is that we're not checking for them, but they're checking for us. And the reason why, the reason why the 360 is happening is because one, a lot of black men are earning a lot of money now, and two, a lot of Indian women are a lot of Indian women are incredibly well organized when it comes to career. You know, yeah. they got everything pretty much down packed. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I can give to them, though. They're very go hard people. And the reason why they're go hard people is because back home in India, they were so suppressed by the, um, you know, by the patriarchy over there. So as soon as they get here, they, they hit the ground and running fast. They got doctor's offices. They got dentist offices. They own different um, public different. When you go to Silicon Valley in, um, in California, it's basically a bunch of Indian women everywhere. They're just basically, you know, Silicon Valley oh, just yeah, filled up a bunch of Indian women. Yeah, yeah they, they're checking for us, IP, but we're just not checking for them. That's what's going that on. Because I was actually... Mm, sorry, I, I, was at, I, was actually, I was actually talking to um, a friend of mine. Um, uh, she was telling... She works She works at a hospital in... Um, in um, where is this? In Mount, Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. And she was telling me that one of her... Um, one of her coworkers is she's a black woman. She's African American woman, and she was she was a, she was complaining that all three of her sons are married to Indian women, and she didn't want that. She wanted them to marry African American women, but they were complaining that they just can't deal with the BWs anymore. So you know, it, it's definitely happening. Yeah, they're they're yeah. checking for us, but the majority of us are not really checking for them like that. They are yeah. checking for us. Uh, carry on, carry on, carry on. Yeah, no, I I I saw the financial situation. I I saw what was going on. So. They were looking for the physical aspect, but a lot of the guys in the gym didn't have that kind of money. They didn't have like one hundred twenty to one hundred thousand dollars a year. Whoa! I have feedback. Who is that? Not me. Was that you? No, no, was not me. Was not me. Uh, okay, I've muted everyone. Please turn off the feedback. So it's either Tony or J Bones. No, it's Tony. Okay, so. Yeah, they're looking for a guy who definitely has like of his finances together, but they want the black physique. And but the guys in the gym like didn't have the money. Like I was like one of the richest guys there. And you know, I was only making like thirty thousand dollars a month back then. And like the guys didn't have the mic my, my kind of cash flow, but I I don't have ripped muscles. I'm not like a like a pro athlete, but that's what they were looking for. And so they were hooking up with them, but they weren't they weren't marrying them, but it was physical. They were definitely enjoying it. Was that what you were seeing, Phil? Or was that what someone told you? By, oh, I uh, saw it with my own eyes. I saw that happen mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Damn. I just wasn't, I wasn't into that kind of woman. I was like, no, there's just, I'm not, you know, I'm not Tyrone. They want, they want Tyrone with $150,000 a year. And I'm like, yeah, so does everybody else. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, they are checking, and I can I can confirm with Jay Bones, especially in Vancouver, some parts of the UK as well. But yeah, probably Vancouver, some, for, yeah, Vancouver, they're definitely checking. But uh, it's, it's basically they're not our preferences. Uh, most brothers are not checking for them. I've got a super chat from um, uh, Captain Cisco. He says, "Which Asian woman had the biggest <laughs> biggest behind?" <laughs> I think it's Thai from what I see, or Vietnamese. Oh, no, no, it's that. Filipino. <laughs> okay. There you go, there you go, Captain Cisco. Filipinas, Filipinas all day long. I mean, I was dating some Filipinas that had asses. I mean, you know, behinds like BWs. Don't sleep on those halves with that bottom neither. Yeah. If that's right. you can go up in the Udatani, yeah. Yup. <laughs> yup. Negritos and yes. Yes, yeah. Filipinos have it. They got the they got the behind. You you can find some girls in Japan like that too now, but the Philippines Ooh. I think they got that beat just about on any of. Them. Awesome. All right, thanks for that super chat, Captain Cisco. Uh, brothers, feel free to send in more super chats, brothers. You know, um, I've got another super chat here. Um, Nick O says Canadian Indian woman love BBC. I can confirm. Nicole, call him, brother, <laughs> to speak on it. Nicole, <laughs> Nicole, <laughs> call him, call him, bro, because uh, I, I, me, uh, I, they're not really. But shout out to Nicole for the super chat. But they're not really my preference, to be honest. So it's not really something I'm interested in. But if brothers want that, <laughs> I'm not going to knock it for that. You know, everyone has their own preference. So uh, no, I agree with you, IP, on that. For me too, that's not my preference. Even if I was a single dude, when I was single. You know, for me, I don't know what it is with, with Indian women. Their bodies just, I don't know. They just don't look normal to me. Keep, keep it PG. Keep, keep it PG. Keep it PG. I'm keeping it PG. It, it, it's just okay. The one that I, that I knew in Vancouver, now she was beautiful. And she was a model, actually. So she was like runner up for Miss Canada, runner up for like Miss India and whatnot. And she'd go around the world a model. Now she was fine. That girl was beautiful. and she But she was Canadian Indian, right? Her parents came over and then they had her. But I, I don't know. It's just something about, the, like they said, there's no in between. Either they're really beautiful, or they're just just totally yeah. ugly. It's just I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. I feel, I feel you. I mean, that's that's just basically. It's just it's either the left side or the right side. Either they're really or they're really ugly. But yeah. you know, for me personally, um, IP, if I was gonna go for any Indian women, um. Check, check out the Native Americans. The Native American girls oh, in America, yeah. like they're, yeah. yeah, the Native Americans here. And the the thing about it too is that if you date a lot of the Native American girls here, you're definitely looking to get some benefits. <laughs> you're definitely looking to get some benefits because a lot of them are feminist. Yeah, I mean, they're yeah. not feminist, yeah. but feminine. A lot of them are feminine. Fem there, a lot of them are feminine, and and one of the things too is that when you have kids with Native Americans here. Your, your kid is pretty much set up for the next couple of years because there's a big chance they're probably going to go to college for free. They're probably not going to pay any taxes. You know, mm. certain things like that is going to benefit them. Yeah. Hey, how we do we do on that, um, Dave Bones? Um, if you want them, because I, I, I had my own real estate appraisal business now for 17 years. But before that, I was um, I was a um, telecom tech and we used to travel a lot um, to Domestic, um, Albuquerque, New Mexico have a lot of Native Americans and they be checking hard. And so, if you want okay. to go to Albuquerque, yeah, uh, yeah. Albert, Albert, Albuquerque is pretty cool. But if I were you, I would try to go to more of the places where, um, there that they have a much more intelligent section of the native americans like i'll give an example some of them are a lot of some native americans reside in jersey and they mm -hmm. they're definitely yeah they, they're the, that's the smart native americans you understand what i'm saying yeah don't don't go in Wisconsin too and yeah but don't go they for the ones too. we got a lot of them in seattle too in mm -hmm. seattle too yeah but don't don't go for the ones running around in the jungle trying to uh hunt a rabbits you understand what i'm saying <laughs> don't don't try to don't try to go for the woods trying to um you know, <laughs> capture a deer or something like that. <laughs> go for hey, the, problems, yeah, man. go for yeah, go for the smart ones. Go for the smart yeah, ones. Trust you know, me. I was in Seattle for a few for a few months, man. That was that was beautiful. Yeah. I had All to right. be, that was nice. All right, th thanks for that, brothers. Let me bring in uh, City of Truth ninety one. What's yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how's everybody doing? Um, and uh, how you how you doing, Theo? How you doing, uh, Tokyo six four? I did see and uh, Tokyo six four. I think it was a. Uh, I don't know if it was last week or it was the week before that, 
Uh, you did an interview where you was talking about Japan. Uh, I thought it was really good. I thought you gave a lot of insight, man, how you was talking about the Japanese women, the culture, how they are, the different regions of Japan and stuff like that. Uh, I found that very to be very informative. And I, I plan on, on visiting Japan myself, hopefully real soon. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for that content. But as far, uh, I wanted to go ahead and get in on this. As far uh, as the, I, uh, you, got, you got feedback on your. All right, um, all, right yeah, all right. I don't think that was me. I think that was somebody else. But um, yeah, I just want to say, um, as far as uh, as far as the Indian women, I don't think y'all are doing the Indian women justice because whenever I look at the Indian women. Um, the ones online, I see them as, as you know, I see them as, as thick. I see Bobby's them as, checking as, for them, bro. I, no, but, checking hold for on. Them. It's, it's, well, this is this is what, what I see when I see them, though, is when I see them online and stuff, I see them as thick. I see them as voluptuous. I see them as alluring. Um, mm. Some brothers say that, you know, that they're uh, they're ugly. It's not so much that they're ugly, but what it is, some of them do have strong features. But, you know, me personally, I can deal with that. I don't mind strong features. Um, but when I look at a lot of them, um, you know, they're so the thing I like about them is that they're so um, they're so success oriented as a culture. And a lot of them are business oriented. And I like that they're, because you know, I'm, I'm a I'm. Dude, I, 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 don't, I don't I don't care about that because let me let me explain that is feminism there's so many layers to feminism, okay, and and with me, oh. there's and, and with me, there's there's a difference between feminism and what I call um, matriarchalism. Now, in the black community, that's what we have. Our women are not feminists, okay. Our women are matriarchal, and that's oh. a completely that's a completely different thing. Feminism is more so. Um, is more so a, a socio-political reaction to industrialization that occurs in industrialized nations. Okay, there's ways to navigate feminism, but when I look at these 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 Indi these Indian women, the ones I've I've, I've interacted with, um, a lot of them are real smart about things like science and math. A lot of them kind of have like a it's like they have a masculine uh, brain too because they're they're into science and, and math and that kind of thing. I find that sexy in a woman, but that's just me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and 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 end it right there. If if Theo or anybody else wants to go ahead and, and respond to me on that, um um or whoever, um that's fine. But I want to hear everybody else's feedback. Uh yeah, City of Truth. Hey, uh, thanks for that, brother. Um I, sorry Theo, I, I know you you was waiting in the queue for a minute, but it was on my mind. You remember what people say, man, men don't care about a woman's career. We don't care what they make. We don't care nothing about their career. OK, so, yeah, if you look at it from that standpoint, yeah, Indian women are probably the most professional out of all the women in the world because they are highly educated and they are highly successful. But, you know, that may be a sexual turn on. But I know in my opinion, for me, I, that doesn't concern me one bit. I'm not in, interested in none of that. I'm interested in when I look at a woman, I want to know, is she highly suitable for a wife? That's what I'm looking at a woman for. Every woman I look at, I look at when I was single, I was looking for them. I would say, are you highly suitable as a wife? I don't need a career woman. I don't need a woman, you know, all this and that. I just need to know, are you going to take care of my children? Because I make the money to be able to take care of that. So we I might have some input we, on that, Jay Bones, but that's we, just we might. We might be pushing the envelope a bit, but let me explain something to you about Indian women, especially here in America. They are just a little bit shy away. They're they're just a tad bit shy away from the sisters in the community. A lot of Indian, yeah, a lot of Indian women want to be in charge. A lot of them want to be in charge. Yes, a lot of yes, yes. a lot of them want to be in charge. When you're around them, a lot of them give you the black woman vibe. They give you that. Yes. Is somebody? I hear feedback. Is yeah, somebody? Fia, Fia, uh, you got on? feedback. Fia, you got feedback on your, on your side. Can you fix it, Fia? Because every time you unmute yourself, you hear feedback. <laughs> yeah. Carry on, I, was, I was. Um. Yeah. If you're if you're around them, trust me, IP. I don't know what I can't speak unless you tell us, IP. I can't speak for what goes on in England, but here in America, you're around Indian women. 
a lot of them want to be in charge. Like a lot of them are just, you know, they are they're a tad bit. I would say they're just a little bit, not even just a little bit, probably just as much as the same of being around some of the sisters in the community. They have a real masculine feel to them. Most of them yep. kind of look at themselves as, you know, I'm in charge. I'm going to tell you what to do, you know, get out of my face type of behavior. So to tell you the truth, I mean, it depends on what you like, but trust me when I tell you, I'd rather we have an abundance of women to pick out of and nobody's checking for Indian women. I'm sorry, bro. It's it's not, I'm not, I'm not even, I, yeah. I, I never even look, I've never even looked at them like that. Like I've never even kind of, you know, they barely, they barely, they barely even, li- some of them barely li- even listen to their own fathers. Some of them okay. even barely listen. Yeah. I, I don't, ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody got yeah. that. Yeah. On that note, we're gonna end this Indian topic, man. Uh, Zero of Truth, we ain't checking for them, man. Uh, there'll, there'll probably be never be a video on my channel of Indian women. To be honest, <laughs> no, we, we're just not, we're, we're just not, not checking on them. To be honest, but oh, Thomas is here. What's up, Thomas Demian? Well, <laughs> yes. everyone of our Indian women, fam. What's up, everyone? Uh, how's what everyone doing? All good, what's brother. Up, All good. What's up, bro? Yeah, how are you finding the live stream? Well, how are you finding the? Excellent what's that? so far, man. Very excellent. Yes, bro. Um, so I'm guessing Singaporean women are now on your list, Thomas. Yes, they are. But let me let me let me add on to the Indian women topic, fam. Because <laughs> they... okay, okay. After that, no more Indian, no more about yeah, Indian yeah, women. No. After your point. <laughs> uh, but on, on, on that note, brothers. Uh, wait, hold up, brothers. On that note, brothers. Can we get the lights up, brothers? And can we please send in some more super chats? All right. If you're enjoying this live stream topic, people in the people in the comments are saying. Um, What's happening to the stream? We've had all, we've had two hours, thirty minutes speaking about Singaporean women. Now we're just speaking about a different topic. We'll, now, after Thomas makes his last point, we will get back on track about Singaporean women. Okay, brothers. All right, please be patient, brothers. Say your last point, Thomas, and let's go, bro. Uh, I've dated Indian women in the past. Um, yeah, yeah. It's not. I can't. I can't wife that fam. <laughs> it's not gonna Why happen. Why too, they're too masculine. <laughs> they're beautiful. Don't get me wrong. They're beautiful. Very um, masculine. Very oh, masculine. Oh man. Yeah. Oh man. Especially, I dated one in college. Uh, nah, nah. I was like, she's good at smoking. I'll give her that. But if I'm if I'm looking to wife you, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. All right. Thanks. Thanks for that, Thomas. Um, shout out to Nick O for the super chat. He says, uh, "Thank you uh, for the two dollars super chat, Nick O." Uh, he says, IP is right. I'm not checking for them. Oriental for the way. Oh, uh, yep. There you go, brothers. All right, let's get back on track. No more Indian women discussion. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Um, so, Thomas, uh, will Singaporean women now be on your list? I know you're definitely into Japanese women, brother. What about Singaporean women based on what you've heard so far on this live stream? Uh, Oscar, um, who are you calling a for, Oscar? If you're talking to me or anyone in our live stream panel, I'm gonna I'm gonna ban you permanently. Don't no, get I rude. Think, I think he was talking to um City of Truth. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, how can we not insult each other on this platform? Don't call anyone stupid fools. Keep it respectful. If you disagree with someone, say you disagree with someone. Let's not um call each other names. We're all adults here, okay, brothers? Uh, yeah, carry on, Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're putting your women there. Um... Yeah, they sound they sound very interesting. Not gonna lie, yeah, um, they're definitely on my list, especially Thai women. I'm like, oof, Thai women, man. Was, uh, my 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 next door neighbor, yeah, she's from <laughs> she's from Thailand. So I'm like, uh, move to her then, make her your girlfriend, bro. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> make her your girlfriend. But she's been westernized. That's the problem. But they're saying that even if they even if they live here in the West, they still have family uh, cultures in, ingrained in them, so the the West cannot change them. So Thomas, make a move, set up a date, coffee date, get to know her, and do well, your thing, bro. <laughs> do your thing, fam. <laughs> <laughs> do your thing, fam. Do your thing, fam. You know, run run the, run that thing, fam. Run that game, fam. <laughs> Go on, bro. They keep their femininity, fam. They really do. They really do. You know, I dated a lot of times in the U.S. And they still are very feminine. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm. I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to visit Singapore. I've never been there before, but it seems very interesting. Gotta go. 
All right, thanks, thanks for that, Thomas. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm still laughing off the Indian discussion. We 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 just spent thirty minutes speaking about Indian women. I don't know who who brought it up in the first place. <laughs> that was me. That was my fault because I was asking Theo <laughs> about the um, teas in Singapore, and that's where it came. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but no, it's good for me, man. I'm gonna run that back and just read, uh, listen to it again because that was good intel, man. You could do a whole yeah. segment, IP. You could just drop it and call it Indian, <laughs> the skinny on Indian women and just throw that up there on YouTube. <laughs> I might, just, I might just do that, brother. I might just do that. Um, Theo, you see, what's up, bro? I'm here. I, I'm dealing with audio issues. My um, right, um, that one pair of earphones only lasts like three. Three months, three hours. So I had to change your phones. All right, Theo. Um, do you want to drop drop us more intel uh, regarding Singapore, or is that all you have for us, bro? Um, the big thing about them is, um, again, just being yourself and really um, being assertive. That's it. Just don't be a jerk there. That's it. I mean, and make sure you have money. Um, yeah. But you don't lead with money there. Never lead with money. It will not work in Singapore. You'll get slammed. Um, it, it's kind of like if I, I would ne- if I dated a, a, a bird in, uh, in the UK, I would never lead with money either. That'd just be disastrous. Um, so, yeah, don't do that with Singaporean women. Um, melee, go with them. There's a lot of selection there. You can definitely enjoy it. You guys, the rest of you guys have given great intel as well. So, I mean, it was, it was good. I was glad to have we had this conversation. Um, I didn't think I really had anything to say about Singaporean women until, I, until you know, UIP started talking to me about it. I was like, oh, okay, maybe I have something to say. So, um, I'm glad that, you know, people learn some things about it. And, uh, um, yeah, yeah, let's do another one. Yes, definitely, man, definitely. Um, I think... Um, yeah, we, we, we spent the first two hours, 30 minutes of of us dropping pure intel regarding Singaporean women. So the stream is done. Um, so people in the live stream, in the live stream who feel disappointed by the stream, I don't know how because we've, we've gave you all the intel already. We're just talking about different things that just came in. Um, <laughs> but no more, no more Indian women at the moment. Um, but I think... Oh, go on, Tony. Go on, Tony. I'm sorry, IP. And I know I, I don't mean to cut you off, brother. I know it's your show, man. But I just wanted to say, see, I, what I learned noticed is that we talked about different Asian women up here on this platform. And and you mean and I was surprised even because it was my fault throwing the Indian women. But what I what I gather from this is that you have so many different segments that you can spin off just off of this one stream, brother. Mm, you really yeah. do. Yeah, um, I was gonna tell you mine because Singapore is just it's a um, it's a melting pot city per se. Like, it's just so many. That's how you can kind of get off of actual just talking about Singaporean women because there's so many other women there from other countries. So that's that's how it is there. Um, so that's why, like Tony said, I think that's why I kind of like branched off. You can go to so many different segments, you know, because like I said, they got the you know, like they said, Chinese, Indian, the Malayan, the Indonesian, and the Thais, and the um, Filipinos. Here. And like I said, if you go to that Marina Science, you're going to see some chicks from Europe there. Yeah, I agree yeah. with John Camp on that. You know what? And now I see why we did touch base on a lot of different different kind of Asian women, because Singapore yeah. is multicultural. I know when, yeah. when you do streams on Japan, we only going to be on Japan because yeah. when everybody goes to Japan, all the brothers care about are just Japanese girls. Exactly. Everybody else is standing around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm, actually, that's a good point. That, um, so apart from Indian, Chinese, and Malay women in Singapore, would I be meeting Russian women there, Ukrainian women, maybe some Japanese women, maybe some other groups of women apart from Indonesian and Thai? Speak on that for you, Tony and Sean. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you're going to be able to meet other women there. And that's that's where it's actually more... I mean, it's, it's okay. Like, for example, I talked about Rio last week. If, if In Rio, I, I wouldn't want to talk to European women there because I'm like, yeah, you're a tourist. I know you're going for Brazilian men. I don't care. Like, go ahead, go and do their thing. Whereas, you know, you could date European women um, in Singapore, 
if you want to. I mean, they're there. Um, you could date Brazilian women. You could, there, there's, there's, there's an international culture there. I just found it, you know, I found a melee. I found a tie. That's all I needed. Yeah, I met this girl there, the one I was telling you about, man, this, this half white, half Chinese girl. At the, there's a university called University of Southeast Asian Studies mm, in Singapore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was there on the study tour, so we had stopped by there because my teacher had went to the school. She was from Singapore. And, man, I tell you, I met this girl in the cafeteria over there. And I just couldn't hit it off with her because, you know, we had to go. And they kept saying we got to go. And I kept trying to stay. I mean, this girl was hot. She was very friendly. very Like I said, they're very sophisticated. They're articulate in the conversation. They're very polite. They, 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 they're they into what you have to say. So they, they listen. I think the big thing about the Singaporean women is they listen well is what I noticed. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. listen yeah. really well, and, they, and then they respond well. Compared to, yeah. say, a Japanese woman, the issue you may run into, and it's not too many issues, but with them, is that when you're in a communication, when you're talking with them, you may not necessarily get back the proper response. And that's going to, you're going to get annoyed by that from time to time. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. And, um, and just to add, like, um, IP, the European women I did see there, they were rushing. I don't know if that was your same experience, T. L. Tony, uh, in Singapore. The European women that you did run into, they were the ones that I saw were mostly Russian. Um, yeah, that's that's all. And it was a couple of Australians there too. Not a lot, but they were there. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I really didn't care about white Chica. Especially yeah, I, I didn't care there. about that myself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if there's a lot of Asian girls around, I'm just like, eh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're white. <laughs> okay. Okay. Not we kind of is the tall, nice body. I still think Chinese girls got the best bodies out of all Asian women. I know the Filipino got the bump, but the Chinese, they got the height, they got the body, man. I mean, it's well, it's well proportioned. Um, you meet a lot of girls from Taiwan and, and, and China, because China's a big country, right? So many different yeah. kind of women from China. But I think they have they have a well put together package. The Thai also have a good package. But they're um, in the Vietnamese, but they seem to be shorter. What you'll find about the Vietnamese is that when you get them, when you get into that groove with them, you're surprised at how big those jugglers are. You're like, oh my goodness, I didn't know you had those mm-hmm. jugglers size. That's not those when I was dating Vietnamese girls. Mm-hmm. That was my experience as well with Vietnamese girls. You just, it looks like there's nothing there, and then suddenly, like, oh my God, it's like play tectonic. Yeah, they come there's from? some mountains in here. Yeah. yeah. Well endowed. I'm like, hmm, no wonder you had a war. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> they were fighting over you. They were fighting over you. All right. We have um, uh, JP Muscardi, who's just joined the live stream call. What's up, JP? What's up? What's up, fellas? How y'all doing tonight? What up? What up? What up? All, all, brother. Mm-hmm. all good, brother. All good. How you keeping, bro? Um, I am good. Um, quick, um, IP, you never got back to me today. <laughs> Uh oh, I was meant to, yeah, I was meant to call you, uh, uh, brother. I'll call you later on today. Sorry, bro. Uh, I yeah, had nah. a busy day today, but I'll call you today, Sunday, right? Yeah, I'll call you later. Yeah, on yeah. In the afternoon. I no, no, it's cool. I figured because um, I randomly seen your live stream earlier, and I was like, oh, okay, more than likely he he got that last minute. Understandable. You're you're a busy man. I'm not gonna stress it. I just wanted to remind you. Yes, but, bro. We'd, we'd, we'd definitely have that stream, bro. So I'll definitely reach out to you, bro, again. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to say was, um, I know you guys are talking about the, the behinds of these Asian women, but from what I heard is that women from, uh, Myanmar typically have, you know, bigger behinds. And I wanted to know if either, you know, since Theo and Tony are well-traveled, if they can either confirm that or deny that. Um, I, I know some girls from Myanmar up here in Seattle because we got all kind. They do have the bottoms, but the thing what is, what you got to know about these, if they have the bottom, they don't have a lot up top. You see what I'm saying? It, it's not well yeah. balanced. That's what I'm getting at. You won't see uh, okay. well balanced ones. My uh, thing that? was that I would just say that Thai was more sensitive to pounding from behind. That was my feeling about it. I mean, I don't know about how the rest of the guys would say, but the Thai women liked it from the behind the most. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's true. That is true. Yeah. Uh, 
Theo, yeah. it just sounds like he's just trying to get guys to go to Thailand or mess with Thai women. Um, um yeah, JP. Um, yeah. Um, cause there are a lot of women from Myanmar, Northern Thailand. Like when you go up by Chiang Mai and all that. Um, their bodies are similar to Thai women. It's kind of like the same. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, it's not. Now, I'm, I'm going to give y'all some sneaky intel. You know who kind of got, like, some bodies on them? Women from Laos. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, yeah, they, they, they got some bodies on them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, brothers. Um, You're gonna ten more minutes. Diddy again. <laughs> ten oh, more God. minutes. Oh, uh, no, but there's nothing better than the smell, a Japanese woman with the beautiful hair and the smells, the way they walk and talk. And, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I got to get to Japan, man. I got to get yeah. all day. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't worry, man. A um, shower after this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did y'all notice Theo hasn't been right since we was talking about the Indian women? He just like went all track after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just couldn't. I couldn't handle it because I remember like going go out in the gym, and I was like, "Stop it! Yeah. Stop talking about it!" Like, like, Come on, guys! But I remember in the gym there was a Pakistani girl, mm. and she was one of the most beautiful girls I've seen in my life. Yeah. She was well, just absolutely stunning. But she was making one hundred and fifty thousand, and she wanted money. Like it was the focus, and I was like. I make like over three hundred thousand. There's no way I'm gonna be able to focus on money. It's not gonna happen. No. Um, so a lot of these women from these other countries, at least they like for, like for example Thailand or Japan, if you have the money and you have the presence, it's least likely that's gonna be a problem. Japan Japanese women will ride and die with you as long as they're devoted to you. So they'll there won't be any issue. Um, that's why yeah, for a wife it's good. I just really miss Thai. What can I say? I just remember them. Yeah. I miss Thai sometimes too, trust me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, I don't remember it all. Okay. 22 uh, year old boy from Thailand, you're done. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, why did I return to the United States? Because I had it going so good in Asia. Like, just like for some sort of like place of death. I mean, sure, the money is good. I like the housing. Like, my house is huge here. I mean, I like what I got here. I got my gym and everything in the state. Yeah, but, you got the San Francisco uh, thing going on. <laughs> yeah, right? It's a good thing. But, you know, the action, the life, it was in Asia. And, um, like, dating, in, of course, in, in Ukraine and Russia. That was, that was like, excited to have a, day, a Saturday night date. Excited for Friday, right? Whereas here in the States, it's like, eh. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing, Theo. You know what, Theo? I just remember that. You're right, brother. What I noticed is when I would go out on dates in other countries, I'd feel good, man. I'm like, I know it's going to be a good night. Yeah. But in the U.S., you're like, okay, who am I going to? Oh, no, no. Oh. And then you get in the middle of the date, and then the girl says something stupid or say something out of the ordinary. And you're like, wait a minute, where's this going? And I'm trust me, brothers, I've stood up from a few dates in the States, and I said, you know what? This thing is over. Let's put the check. Wow. Yeah, the wow. only place where I've actually left in the middle of the date is in yep. the United States. Whereas in Japan, it was rarely to have a, a bad date. It didn't happen. I mean, it may be a little unpleasant, but that's not not bad. Singapore, Thailand, um, uh, the Philippines, there, there weren't bad dates. It was good, erotic, exciting, fun. Same thing for yeah. I was gonna say and, uh, the date, yeah, the dates are just yeah. fun overseas. Period, man. It's just, just a different atmosphere. I, I, I haven't dated in the U.S. Yeah. in so many years, so I'm I'm out the loop totally <laughs> with date I, here. I refuse to date in the country. It is absolutely horrible. Yeah. That's why I live four miles away from Austin International Airport. I mean, if I want to date, that's where I'm going. I'll call a dog yeah. sitter real quick and say, you have the key to my house. <laughs> you know, the dog, I'll just transfer the money. Literally, that's how I do it. And then she knows, I, I do a bank transfer. I do my passport. That's it. I, I leave, you know, go on a date. 
Yep. All right, brothers. Um, if I'm going to end the stream now, uh, three hours, 30 minutes of hardcore <laughs> intel, including intel on Indian woman. So, thanks <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for that, brothers. Um, let me go through one. Uh, I'll go through each person to say the last closing point, then I'll end the stream. Mm -hmm. So I'll start from the top. Uh, yeah, Tony Berry, um, any closing statements you want to say, brother? Yes. I, first of all, I want to thank all you brothers up here on the panel. Thank you, IP, for putting the streams out every time. Always classics, no matter what. I'm going to watch what I didn't see. Um, yeah, brothers, I just want to say, you know, we got to talk to more brothers. Get them out there. Get their passports. Tell brothers to, to keep the code. Build the code if they don't have one. Get this, Keep from pulling their pants halfway down their butt. Pull your pants up. <laughs> get your clothes right. Get your cologne right. You know, don't be simping. Get over there. And like Kamal Brooks, brother Kamal Brooks, I know he'll probably watch this later, who's in Japan, who just chopped it up with me this morning on video. He said he thanked me for telling him this, giving this advice on you never ask a woman anything. You tell them where you're going to take them and you tell them where you're going to meet them. And then they'll mm. let you know if that's okay. Those are my mm. final words. That's all I want to say about that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, how's Kamal doing anyways, uh, Tokyo 64? I mean, he, he he's doing well, man. He's... um. The problem with Japan right now um, is they're on lockdown, especially in the Tokyo area. He, so he's going to Yokohama, which is not a bad alternative, right? That's like saying, okay, you can't go to New York, so let's go to Toronto, right? So, but the thing is, the problem that he's having with the military is the military is more restrictive, so they can't go to clubs. So I've given them some advice. I said, look, go to convenience stores, go to restaurants, go to the places where the women work and talk to them there because they can't run mm -hmm. anywhere. And when you meet him, he said he met this pretty Japanese girl, that he, and he, he hoped he's here again. I said, what station she get off? He told me. I said, be at that damn station at the same time she gets off, and give her your phone number. And just say, then watch that. Give her your phone number. He said, really? I said, yeah, give her your phone number. Give her your line, and, and then she'll call you up. Because that way she feels comfortable because she doesn't <laughs> feel like you're trying to you know, get after her. So, yeah, yeah he's doing really well over it. He's, he's learning a lot of things. Oh, thanks, for that. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that, uh, Tony <laughs> Berry. Um, uh, Sean Camp, what's your closing statement if you have one, brother? Um, yeah, man, um, I just want to encourage brothers to get those passports, travel. Um, don't don't stay in the West. Don't be miserable, man. You can you can get the passport and get rolling. Uh, that's what I'll tell the brothers, man. It just staying on top of it. Singapore. Um, I think a lot of people overlook it, but it's to me, it's like a perfect stopover spot. Say, like if you're gonna be in Asia for, I'll say two and a half, three weeks. If you're gonna be on that side, like Thailand, Malaysia, Cambodia, Vietnam, I'll say stop in Singapore. Um, um, you know, go there for about four or five days if it's like a layover trip, and um, and check it out, man. It's a it's a unique city it's one of the most unique places i've been mm -hmm. um as far as the diversity and stuff so um yeah um i would say you know check it out um if, if you got time if you're on that side of southeast asia um just wanted to drop that in there thanks brother um thomas demihan do you have a closing statement bro yeah i have to say this man um um P.O. Tony, um, both of you are absolute legends. It's a real blessing. And both of you um, come, come to this mm -hmm. live stream. So I, I say thank you, both of you. Also, thanks other brothers who are on the um, panel as well. Um, IP, I say keep up the great work, man. This has been another classic. This only demonstrates that brothers, we've got options. And, mm -hmm. you know... BWs from the UK and US, they don't like that. Forget about them. Because <laughs> they don't want us. That's cool. Other foreign women want us. And that's, this is only the proof. So I said, brothers, get your passport. IP, you're a legend. Keep up the great work. Um, Thank you very much for those kind words, Thomas Demihin. UK brother, legend as well. Brothers, please get the likes up as well, brothers. And brothers, feel free to super chat before I end the stream. Again, any support is greatly appreciated. It's, it's 5.15 a.m., you know, in the UK. I'm, I'm putting out classics for you, brothers. I want I want brothers to do well 
have great mental health, meet the woman of their dreams. So any support that you can give this channel will be greatly appreciated. Before I carry on with the, with the rest of the uh, panel members, brothers, join the Facebook group. Again, you'll find me, me, Tony, Theo, uh, Jay Bones, uh, Thomas Demihin on that Facebook group. Dropping great intel. I know Thomas gives out great intel. Thomas, Theo, and Tony. The other day, um, Thomas wrote a very detailed reply to a brother who was seeking career advice in IT, and that was incredible. So we help each other out in that group. Uh, that's what we need to be doing as brothers because we all we have, no one is going to support us. BWs don't have our backs. We need to support each other as black men. Um, here's my Twitter as well, brothers. Um, follow me on Twitter. Uh, send me a DM on Twitter. Um, you can reach out to me regarding traveling stocks, crypto, and that would be great. I'm also on Instagram as well. Follow me on Instagram and um, send me a DM. I'll reach out to you as well. This call server is coming very soon. And once one consultation is coming very soon, Cash App, PayPal coming very soon because brothers are requesting that. Give me more time, brothers. I'm just been very busy doing different things. Um, let me move on to Jay Bones. Do you have any closing statements, brother? Yeah, I feel. What's going on, bro? Do you have any um, closing statements? Yeah, I wanted to get this. Um, I wanted to get this out there. Um, the last live stream. Um, I think as far as you know, we we keep on going with the content and the information that is given to you know some of the brothers in the live chat and the brothers on the panel. I think I want to point out something very important. I think the most important thing that we have to learn is that besides the information that's being given out towards you know the women, whether they're Asian or they're Brazilian or they're from Australia, the most important thing I want to point out is I was talking to Dimitri the other time and I was explaining something to him. Um, the most important thing that we got is looking at images like Tony and Theo. Now let's look at somebody like Tony for a quick second. You know, we got a brother that's 59. He looks like he just turned damn near 30. <laughs> and what I, what I appreciate is that we got brothers like this in the space because I remember seeing how Tony was talking about how happy he is with his wife. And the truth about it is that it's happiness. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. The, the thing that is restricted from us as black men, it doesn't matter what part of society you go into. We got, we got a, a, a big problem with black men not understanding the concept of happiness. That's, that's the whole thing. The whole thing is happiness. That's the whole thing. You know, we, we can sit up here and it's it's Australia on Monday and then it's Brazil on Tuesday and then it's Colombia on Thursday. Then we're talking about Ukraine then we're talking about this. But you got to find you a woman that's going to make you happy because our yeah. backs, our backs are against the wall when it comes to society. Black men are not black men are competing with the entire world and we're competing without any sense of backup. There's nobody's going to nobody's backing us up. That's just, you know, I'm sorry. I don't want to scare the brothers, especially we got a lot of young brothers in here, but I don't want to scare you. But trust me, you know, when you're coming up and you see certain things, like I remember when I was at Notre Dame, some of the brothers used to tell me all the time, they're like, yo, you know, you have to be able to understand that this is a, um, this is a collective form. We're doing certain things to be able to adjust to the system, but nobody's going to back us. But we have to look at brothers like Theo and brothers like, you know, Tony and see that, you know, these guys are they're they're not allowing anything to basically hamper their happiness. They're not allowing anything to block their imagination. And black men, we need a huge imagination. You know, sometimes I'm in a Facebook group and I'm reading through it and you got guys saying, how do I get my passports? And I'm like, oh, God, we got a lot of work to do. Mm. We got a lot of work to do, man. I, I, I remember trying to explain to Dimitri, I'm like, yo, there's a passport office down the street from you. And I know you live in Florida and I live in Jersey, but I can tell you that there's a passport office down the street from you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. we got we got a we got a lot of work to do, IP. We got a lot of work to do, but trust me, the key is whether it's uh, you know, whether you go into Argentina, whether you go into Costa Rica, whether you go into Utah, whether you go into the Native American reservation in uh um uh where's this place in North Dakota, the truth about it is that Find you a woman that's going to make you happy because brother, black men are not investing their time in trying to find out the best way to be happy. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So we, we, that's why uh, we're, we're more than lucky. 
we're more than lucky to have people like Tony and Theo here. You know, these guys are very aggressive. They're not they're not shaking, you know, they're they're not moving an inch from the information. Look look how Tony was handling that that lady castle the other day, just talking to her, like, you know, dr giving her the, giving her the Intel or letting her know that the time has passed. Nobody's worried about these, these idiots anymore within our community. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Ex excuse my language, but nobody's really worried about that stuff anymore. And the truth about it is that we need to find happiness as black men, get your passport, get ready. And let's just, you know, dig up the information. You guys become much more worldly. You know, I had I had no idea what I was doing when I was younger, but you know, I'm I'm glad my father gave me a lot of time to travel. I didn't really find it important, but then you know, t uh, trips to Switzerland, trips to Costa Rica, trips to Morocco, trips to Ethiopia, trips to Togo, trips to Zimbabwe, um, trips to England, trips to Germany. As a kid, I really didn't really think of it as a big deal. I was like, I, I guess I'm just traveling. But then later on, you know, rest in peace to my father. When you know he passed away, I said, you know something. I'm really glad he did what he did because I, I really appreciate him. You know, I really yeah. appreciated what he did for me. But yeah, man. So shout out to all the brothers, man. IP once again. You know, it's um we're getting the information out there. Um, I'm gonna reach out to the brother from Harvard so he can call you and then you guys can set up the live stream about China. Um, he speaks he speaks Russian and I think he speaks Mandarin and I think what else? I think he speaks Italian or something like that. But there's a lot more brothers that you know we we're gonna get a couple of the brothers that live in the Philippines. We got two. We got two Ivy League brothers that they live in the Philippines. They're married to Filipino women. I'm trying to get them up here too. So, you know, we, we need to get the intel out. We need to get the intel out. And uh, I believe Tony's going to be doing a live stream with you about financing. And I'm definitely going to be up there for that one too. So thanks a lot, guys. Yes, definitely. Uh, thank you uh, for that closing statement, Jay Bones. That was powerful. Definitely, man. Happiness is very important. And if you can find happiness in a woman, I'm not going to knock you for it. Make sure it's the right woman. It doesn't give you any stress. It doesn't like um, call you out on nonsense. It's just, just it's there for you through the thick and thin, like Tony's wife. And that's what we all aspire uh, to have in our lives. But again, great closing yeah. statement, Jay Bones. Much appreciated, brother. Um, JP Mascardi, what's your closing statement if you have one, brother? Okay, he's dropped off. Um, Tony, um, Theo WAF, um, Jeb, what's your closing oh. statement, bro, if you have one? Um, great stream. Enjoyed it. I enjoyed giving the intel. I'm glad it had something of value. Of course, I didn't think it was going to be anything. I'm glad that I was able to say something and that people are to listen to it. I'm glad that we have um, an, uh, additional information for brothers to listen to and to understand that they can have options. Uh, I think that's really good what you said, Jay Bones, about happiness. It's something that we need to really pursue. And uh, something I recognized a long time ago, there are no options. There are no backups for us. You have to understand, you are your backup. So you have to establish that. And that's why you have to get your finance on, on point. You have to get your health on point. You have to get your education, your cash flow. You have to do it all fundamentally bootstrap. And But if you do it, you're going to be able to move from one area to another and, and pick the kind of women that you want that make you happy, that's going to make the kind of quality of life that you have. And... You, you wouldn't even have to think about the women back home. You'd be like, what? That, no, that was like a, a nightmare or something I had before. I don't know where I came from. No, that was, no, no, man, no, no, no. I, I'm not going to, nah. Um, that's like kind of like the, you know, Lord of the Rings. You got all those orcs. Yeah, you got to forget about those orcs. They're gone. So, um, again, great job. I think we need, I'm looking forward to Tony's presentation and no, a podcast about financing. It has to happen. You have to think about the cash flow. It is fundamentally important. Whereas if you're not, the cash flow and the skills, if it's not there, this is not going to happen. Mm. Um, you, you can't just wing it. Um, no, even for you, IP, you have to think about how you're, you can't really use the UK as a base. That's unfortunate, but you can't. You have to be thinking about how to go out and get cash from other areas, basically locally, and then move in that kind of environment because, again, your your government just makes it impossible to have wealth accumulation, yeah. and you need that wealth in order to bring in a wife. That's just the way it is. So it's sort of like you can only date the local, date the local strags who are going to destroy your life. So yeah, really, thank you, bro. Thank, thank you, government. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I really.
cheers, cheers, you know, carry on, thank you. Um, anyway, you did a great job, and um, you got to sleep, and I, I got to sleep too, so great job, guys. Thank you for that, Phil. You're, you're, you're right about that. Uh, UK is, it is very tough, you know, just to, America um, can make a lot of money in America. UK, if you make a lot of money, they tax you a lot, so you need to find different avenues uh, to do it. So yeah, I need that stream on finance by Tony. Um, I can't wait for it. I think I'll, we definitely need it uh, in, in our in our space, in the passport space. And um, Tony will get back to me on that through um, our uh, social media platforms. I've got two super chats here. Uh, shout out to Thomas Demihin for the £1.79 super chat. Thank you, Thomas. He says, big up IP for your Tony and all brothers, SYSBM. Yes, indeed. Save yourself, black mm -hmm. men. Black men first in every um, areas of our lives. Thank you, Thomas. Um, Sewell, 1987, thank you, bro, for the $5 super chat. He says, can any other gentleman speak on Middle Eastern women slash Persian women? I know they are mostly Muslim, but uh, but uh, but are there many that are Christian? Oh, um, oh, that's a tough one. Uh, oh, I know in the UK, they're mostly Muslim. I, I, it's very rare that I come across a Middle Eastern Christian, unless she's Lebanese. If she's Lebanese, it, it, it's mostly 70-30 if she's Lebanese, but I don't know if anyone can chime in from the group chat. Yeah, we, we got a lot of we got a lot of Lebanese women here um, between I, I know a lot of Lebanese in Jersey. I was actually I used to date some Lebanese girls, but um, I try not to dive into the Middle Eastern thing too much because, mm. you know, it's, their culture is a little iffy. You know, I, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same. Sorry, we can't give you a clear answer to a nine eighty seven, but, you know, they're mostly Muslim mm -hmm. and I don't want to be involved in in their fears because you know a lot of racism their cultural differences i, I you know I, i've been on dates with lebanese women but when i was speaking to them i knew it would be trouble so i didn't pursue it any further but um, i think they're your best bet lebanese woman um from what i've heard but thank you for that suo 987 for the super chat uh jp muscardi do you have any closing statements brother yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I had some technical issues, but um, um, I, I gotta agree with Theo. You know, because I caught the tail end of what he was saying is that you have to be able to build. You know, especially you have to build multiple streams of income. You can't just allow to yourself to live on one thing. Where if that thing folds over, like. It, it showed with the whole uh, coronavirus thing is that a lot of people were out of jobs. A lot of people were living paycheck to paycheck. A lot of people ended up, uh, uh, well, they're about to get evicted. And it just shows that you have to be able to build those multiple streams of income. Me, I am um, an insurance agent in um, Florida. So luckily I will always have a job because I deal mostly in Medicare. So Everyone is like, there's always people on Medicare, so I will always have a job. Um, but I recently got into um, the real estate investing more on the apartment side, you know, and, and I'm, I'm trying to do other things here and there because I know that if I don't, I'm going to be like dead in water, you know. I got to make sure I put myself in a, in a better position, not just for myself, but you know, for my kids, you know, for currently my daughter or any other subsequent kids I have after that, you know, I, I realized, you know, I just need to make sure I'm in a better position. And as especially black men, that's what we need to do. We need to come together as a collective, work with each other. You know, if I'm good at something, I can teach, you know, Jay Bones or if Tony's good at something, he can teach Theo and vice versa. You know, it just... I, I wish more and more, you know, black men would come together like this group, which is why I love your platform IP. I, I always try to tune in whenever I can. And, you know, I, I just believe that it's it's big on not just supporting each other, but helping each other grow as people. And that's what we should definitely strive to do each and every day. Hey, thanks for you. Thank you for those uh, closing statements, JP Muscardi. You know, this platform here even helps me out because I feel like we have a, a solid community 
where we can just speak to each other on the Facebook group, on on Twitter and on IG and Discord servers coming because I feel like Discord will allow more Discord between all of us. There'll be different sections there, traveling, finances, um, uh, passport applications, offices. So I'm gonna try and make it as big as possible. Uh, we all we have, and I just hope the community just does get bigger because um, there's a lot of brothers out there that need saving. Um, it's very sad to just see brothers just feeling depressed, suicidal because things aren't going right in their lives or the women they deal with are just horrible. And we just wanna, this is why I say hit the like button, support, comment, because it helps YouTube push out my videos because brothers need this. There's a lot of brothers that are going for a lot and um, we need to support each other. We're all we have, you know, no one has our backs. We, we are all we have, we're men. Uh, society does not care about men. We are disposable to society. That's why they say women, children first, men forget about men. So we need to support each other. We are all we have. Um, and yeah, of course, uh, I will see uh, Theo next week again for the Philippines live stream. Um, and I also see Tony hopefully next week to discuss Friday. the finances. I just said Friday night if you can. Friday night. Um, I think I have my stream with Theo Friday night. Okay, no problem. Sir, um, uh, um, Saturday hold on. What, what about Sunday as well? Is that good with you? Um, yeah, Sunday's fine too. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll reach out to you back, uh, uh, Tony. We'll set that up. And um, you want to say something, Phil? I would just say Friday and Tony Friday would be wise. It's actually because it's a lower night for the manosphere. And so I think that would be great content on Friday night. And so Chaos isn't broadcasting this Friday night either. So that would be a great one to do. I mean, just my personal opinion. And then since I'm usually on, on on Saturday anyway, might as well just keep me on Saturday. People know I'm going to be on. Okay. Oh, KS is on on Friday. Okay. I know he, he gets all the viewers on Friday. Okay. So maybe right. Friday night is... Okay. Um, I'll, I'll look into that. Um, I'll see if I can clear my schedule for Friday. But I'll reach out to Tony next week or tomorrow. Tony. Sure. So um, um, I see Sean Camp. I'll let Sean Camp say a closing statement because Sean Camp did give some intel. Sean Camp, uh, can you please say your closing statement before I end the stream, bro? Oh, um, I just wanted to thank everybody one more time. Um, it was great coming on for the first time. Uh, wanted to get in earlier, man, but um, I had my kids with me a lot, so but they're in college now, so I had more time to kick it with you guys. Okay, and thank you very much, brother. Pretty much it. Thank you very much, Sean Camp. Brothers, please get the likes up before Thank I end the stream. Thank you. Right, thank you. Okay, Sean Camp. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank you to JP Muscardi, uh, Thomas Demihin, Jay Bones, Sean Camp, uh, Tony Berry, and Theo WAF for contributing. If I have forgotten your name, um, sorry, um, you're greatly appreciated. Thank you, brothers. And thank you to everyone in the live stream chat as well it's, uh, in terms of your contribution and the super chats that you sent through. Thank you very much for your support. And I will see you brothers on my next live stream. Look after yourselves, everyone. Great health, acquire wealth, and live live strong and freely and get that foreign woman you want to. Okay, brothers? Look after yourself. Goodbye. Peace out. Okay. Uh...